Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by High V. Score big savings with the new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak No Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the University of Iowa, it's baseball time in Iowa City. Live from Dwayne Banks Field, Iowa is looking for a sweep of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights this Sunday afternoon. Welcome to the broadcast booth in Iowa City. Filling in for John Evans is former Hawkeye Brennan Derigi, and I'm John Leo. Two outstanding offensive performances by the Hawkeyes have given them a series win that they desperately needed. But now Iowa is getting a little bit greedy. They're looking for the sweep as Brody Brecht will start on the mound for the black and gold today. He's really due for a great start, and we're hopeful that he can provide one this afternoon. Christian Coppola will start for Rutgers, making his 11th start for the Scarlet Knights. It's a major game for both teams as Rutgers is reeling now at 3-8 and eight in the conference while Iowa is trying to heat it up at 8-6. and six. Iowa and Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights and the Hawkeyes live from Banks in a warm and sunny Iowa City with first pitch coming in a bit. I'd like to thank Gary Dolphin for filling in yesterday uh, on the broadcast. Did a great job. It was it was awesome for me to listen uh, from my other uh, duties and responsibilities yesterday and, and listen to the veteran, the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin, call yesterday's game. It was an exciting game and a win for Iowa. The Hawkeyes now out in front of Rutgers in the series, winning the first two games. Let's relive some of this weekend's highlights. Here's the pitch to Peterson. Swing and a miss. This one gets back to the backstop, though. Here comes Tello. Raider will score, and the Hawkeyes are on the board first. We'll take that. Santa Maria is the batter. Hits it in the air to center. Huxdorf sprinting forward. Kyle still moving. Kyle diving. He made the play. Double and he'll up. throw it to first. And got him. Got him. How about that double play? It starts with Huck in center. A sliding basket catch. He popped up. Fired it to first. Davis Cop with the hang. Eight to three. Double play. The pitch to Ben. He squares to oh. Bunt. Bunt's it right side. Beautiful Bunt. Scoop throw home. He wow. is safe at home. What a Bunt by Benny Wilmes. And Cade Moss dives in safe. It's 4-1 to one, Hawks. Yes. 2-2. Two, two. There you Base go. Hit up the middle. Right Here comes cue. Siegs. Here comes Andy. It's a two RBI single for Davis Cop, and he did it with two strikes. More insurance, 8-1 Hawks, you bet. Two outs for the Scarlet Knights in the ninth. Here's the 2-1 from Jack. Grounded left side. Seeger's charging. Tello's there. He'll step. He'll throw. That'll do it. Iowa wins it, 8-1. Good start to the series with the victory over Rutgers. And a series opening win on this Friday night. Iowa wins it 8-1. to one. Here's a 3-1 delivery. Ground ball. Pats the third baseman into left field. One run is going to score. Here comes the throw to the plate. And the race is on. Head first slide makes it 3-1 Iowa. Now the payoff pitch to Tello. And it's drilled deep to left center field. And it's going to get down for at least a single, maybe a double. It's going to be a double. Two runs in for the Hawkeyes, who now lead it 6-1. Huxdorf looking for something he can drive, and he drills it to deep right field. That's drifting way back. Wind ate it. It is gone. A grand slam home run for Kyle Huxdorf. He got it up into the uh, 
upper atmosphere, <laughs> and there was never a doubt about that one. Goes after the first pitch again, hits it to center field, tailing away from Huxdorf. Can he run it down? He wow, does. Really a great play. play by Kyle Huxdorf. Well, he ran a mile, but tracked it down. He never gave up on it. Again, another thank you to the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin, for uh, calling the game yesterday. Did a great job. And uh, let's get a sweep of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. We'll catch up with pitching coach Sean McGrath right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Oh, oh, coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. The series finale with the Rutgers Scarlet Knights from Banks Field today in Iowa City trying to go for the sweep of Rutgers. We're joined by second-year pitching coach Sean McGrath. Coach, uh, good to talk to you for the first time this year after we made the transition to player interviews, but uh, good to have you back on the on the airwaves. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, you're in charge of the pitching staff uh, this year, and as we've gotten into conference play, uh, the pitchers have, have made some improvements and, and uh, a couple of back-to-back -back nice pitching performances this weekend against Rutgers. Yeah, I, I feel like it's been a trying year. Um, you know, guys facing different adversities throughout the year at different times. But um, you're starting to see a, a bullpen that, you know, is pretty sured up. We have five or six guys that are really throwing the ball well here recently. And um, the starters, it, it's, again, it, it's been a little bit of a battle all year to try to get three good starts on a weekend. But I feel like guys are coming into their own and, and – Hopefully, you know, it's at the right time. It seems like the confidence in this unit is building, and, and pitching itself uh, feels like is such a confidence-driven approach. What are, your, what are your takes on that? Absolutely. It's, it's all about your, your confidence, your conviction, you know, your, your ability to commit to each pitch at a time, not wor wondering what's going to happen, you know, in a couple pitches, not worrying about what happened last pitch. Um, yeah, it's, it's rounding into form, and, and these guys are growing confident. You know, we start to see some momentum, right? The idea is momentum's as only as good as your next day starting pitcher, and we're starting to get, you know, some some stacking of of good starts, and and so hopefully we can continue to to do that. Uh, what's your coaching style like off the field, uh, Sean? When it comes to trying to build that confidence back up, or or just an approach with a with a pitcher that maybe didn't have the outing they were looking for, or need improvement for the next time? What's your what's your style like off the field? Yeah, I try to be evidence-based and um, more objective with my feedback. Obviously, my perspective can also get clouded. Um, so we rely heavily on data to, to help us tell that story, 
um, provide the guardrails for truth there. Um, and then I try to tackle it both individually and then collectively as a group, right? There's there's growing mantras as a season goes on, you know, that your group will have and hang on to. And But personally, each guy's kind of striving to be the best version of themselves. And what that looks like is a little bit different for each guy. Uh, Brennan and I talked about it on Friday, the the sequencing, the pitch calls that we felt that you made were really effective for Cade, and he did a nice job executing the, the pitches that you were calling from the dugout. Yeah, Cade, Cade's been pretty good here recently. He's had two starts in a row where I thought his ability to dominate kind of four quadrants of the strike zone have been really good. Um, you know, obviously Ohio State, there was a different issue. They were running a little bit on him. Um, but he came out and he made some adjustments this week and, and combated the running game, you know, versus another team who really likes to run. He did it quite well and um, was able to locate his fastball in and away, up and down, and, and use the, the slider and change up when necessary. Talking with pitching coach Sean McGrath on our pregame show from Banks today. Uh, okay, looking like Brody Brecht will get the start uh, today for the team. What have you seen from Brody over the last few weeks? Uh, Bro- Brody was in a really good place heading into last week and and has run into a little bit of an issue here you know a non-throwing related issue but um man he's he's a warrior and he's gonna go out on a shield type of thing and uh he's gonna give this team everything he's got today and hopefully it's it's enough to get us through five or six and turn it all over to a you know a fresh healthy bullpen we noticed that uh on friday night with the game seemingly well in hand uh, through Jack Young after Anthony Watts. Are both of those pitchers, do you think, able to go on the board again today? Yeah, Young Young is certainly able to go. I think he's appeared eight times in the last 10 games. He's appeared in about 60% of our games. He's He's been dynamite. You know, availability is important, and he's been available quite often. Um, and Watts hasn't had many two times a week uh, in a weekend, you know, okay. opportunities, but he'll be on the board, and and if we need him, he's certainly ready to go, and he's certainly capable. Uh, when you look at your bullpen, Coach, that has improved so much since the, the beginning of the year. Uh, who's impressed you the most, and then who's the leader out there? Um, you know, I, I think we rely on on a bunch of guys to lead. It, it's kind of leadership by committee. But guys like Jack, Jack Whitlock, who, who's, you know, had a trying year himself after a really phenomenal year last year, He's kind of the voice, um, you know, that I lean on. Jack Young's really stepped into a leadership role. Uh, g- different guys stepping up each day to deliver a different message has been really important for our group. And, man, I, I've been really impressed with a bunch of guys. You know, Buter's ability to turn it around. You know, Watts had a stringer four or five outings where he wasn't very good, and he's been awesome here in conference. Ben Dete, uh, we left him home at some point to work on some things, and he hasn't looked back. Uh, there, there's a number of cases, Savory stepping up and, and providing length and, and meaningful innings and leverage spots. There, there's five or six guys like I talked about that you know I'd go to war with you know as many times as we possibly can. And, and I'm sure they'd feel the same about you, Coach. They'd go to war with you too. Uh, what's, the, what's the one thing you're looking forward to the most out of your group uh, as we wrap up the season? It, I guess it's, it's just, man, how many days can we show up and put our best foot forward? Um, you know, stay hungry, you know, get greedy. Opportunities like today to, to go and sweep a series are important now. Um, and, you know, how well can we manage the the things that happen throughout the game, right? Like the game of baseball. Um, not let that get in our way. Can we make the next pitch, whatever's called, whatever's necessary? And, again, we, we've been improving in that area dramatically so you know can we continue to ride that wave you know and finish this season strong sounds great coach thanks for the time today appreciate you from learfield (laughs) there we go pitching (laughs) coach sean mcgrath on our pregame show from banks we'll talk with coach heller next this is hawkeye baseball from learfield get a great offer on the stylish hrv or the honda civic which car and driver called fun to drive honda the brand named kelly blue books kbb.com best value brand for 2023 For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against high and type R car and driver January 2023. Based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit kbb.com for more information. A bag of corn is, well, a bag of corn. Unless it's a bag of Pioneer brand chrome seed corn. 
Then you're dealing with the most optimized yield potential, agronomic performance, and insect protection the Pioneer lineup has to offer. A bag that will make life easier for you, eight bushels per acre easier, and much harder for rootworms in the competition. Pioneer brand Chrome products, field proven and ready for yours. Visit pioneer.com slash plant chrome. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball today. The finale with the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The Hawkeyes looking for a sweep over Rutgers. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, a couple of nice wins in the series and uh, won the series with a win yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was a, a, a good day for us. Um, you know, it didn't didn't go it didn't go as planned on the mound. Um, like you and I had talked, uh, the importance of the start. Uh, but the offense picked it up with three three big innings, including an eight inning or excuse me, an eight run fourth um, to break it open a little bit. And thank goodness because we gave up five, you know, right after that. And uh, and then the bullpen did a really nice job for us, settled down, settled the game down. Uh, you know, Reese Buter had a had a you know over two inning uh, appearance, and he did a nice job. And then uh, Jack Whitlock was back in there for the first time in a while, and. Like I, like I told you, he he and Sean have been working on some things, and we wanted to get him in the game and, and see if it was going to carry over to the to the real game, and it, and it did. He pitched two clean innings, and really good to see that. Uh, Huxdorf uh, made two stellar plays in the outfield. I mean, game-changing plays. I, uh, I would tell you, had Kyle not made those two plays, um, it might have been... 15 to 14. Oh wow! I mean, it was one. It was both those plays were gonna were gonna break it open. Where they were gonna score a lot of runs. Um, you know, two three two three guys on base, and they were they were either gonna be you know doubles or triples uh, that he robbed. So the defense played a big big role yesterday. No errors on the day, and um, all um, all nine starters had hits. Uh, Michael Seegers continued to to swing the bat. Um, it, uh, well, um, but every, everybody, um, everybody um, contributed yesterday offensively. It was a great team win, and Kyle Huxdorf hit another grand slam. You know, it was like fourth, <laughs> fourth or fifth in his career. Um, was a big blow, and um, you know, Nelson and, and Peterson both both had hits, and Tello and Cop and Moore. Moore had a big double to drive in runs, and uh, Gable Mitchell had a few hits. It was just a really a Cade Moss. Cade Moss executed a hit and run and had another hit and caught a good game and uh, yeah it was it was um, it was a uh, like I said not what I thought it was going to be but uh, it was a really good day for us. Uh, Coach, what's the clubhouse been like? Uh, how's the energy with the guys? They gotta be pretty fired up right now. Well, you hope so. Yeah. Um, you know the the the, the message <laughs> the message was you know don't be satisfied and, mm-hmm. and we need to be greedy and it doesn't matter whether you're sore tired beat up a little bit you know we got to be greedy today and we got to come out and play play hard yeah. uh, with a sweep on the line coach uh, uh, what would that do would that erase maybe the the series loss neutralize that series loss to Michigan for example uh, to get it back in a sweep fashion today <laughs> well I mean you know I don't know if it, it would or wouldn't but um, it would definitely help you know, just get us, just anything's going to help from a win standpoint in the standings, and mm-hmm. especially heading to Nebraska next week, um, where uh, we know they're a really good team and they're tough to play at home. And um, 
you know, so we, we just need to take care of each day. And that was, you know, what we talked about Friday is the challenge is to, to come out and play with the chip on your shoulder and come out and, and, and just fight, just fight hard every single inning the rest of the year. And let's just see where that takes us. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully that we, we swing the bats like we did yesterday. That was probably the most encouraging thing was, you know, we'd been in a little bit of a, a, a slump and it wasn't an easy day to hit. It was freezing yesterday. You know, it was, it was real feel of 34 degrees the whole game and the wind was howling and it wasn't a friendly win unless you hit it down the right field line. And, um, to have, you know, what, 15 hits was really good to see and some extra base hits, which we hadn't been doing much of. Um, I just hope that we come out today and it's, and, and pound the ball. You know, we were disappointed last Sunday. I thought we were going to come out and do the same thing um, we did yesterday, last Sunday. I thought we'd come out and just barrel a bunch of balls up and, 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 and swing the bats, and we didn't. So we'll see what team shows up. And that was their, that was their challenge, to, to, to be greedy and let's show up with the same focus that we had yesterday. And obviously um, the guy on the mound will have a lot to do with that and a lot to say about it. And, you know, the starter for Rutgers um, – was supposed to be their guy. It was a Team USA invite. Um, you know, they thought he was going to be the Friday night ace and the guy who um, who they kind of built the staff around. And he's had a he's had a rough year, um, high ERA, but it's not a stuff issue. And you know, we know we know firsthand that if you catch that guy on the wrong day, you know, you're you're you're. Uh, focus and energy and plan don't always matter if the guy on the mound is dealing, you know, and locating and pitching to the wind and all those things. But um, he hasn't been doing that a, a lot, uh, mm -hmm. but obviously we're preparing for, for that guy sure. in, in case he in case he shows up. And then they have two outstanding, two outstanding arms in the bullpen that we haven't seen yet. Um, you know, their back end guys are really good and, you know, they do have the ability to spray it a little bit you know but it's it's firm it's left-handed 94 95 you know really good stuff um so we 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 definitely want to get out get out to a get out to a good start get off to a good start and get a lead so that um we take those guys out of play if we're behind mm -hmm. When it comes to the, the starting pitcher today, is it something similar to what we saw on Friday night? We're gonna have to grind him out on the edges, or what's the approach like with him? Yeah, I mean he's he he's he's a guy who um, who will miss miss more um, okay. than 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 the other two guys, which is why they bumped him to Sunday. Um, it, it, it's yeah, it's exactly it. It's just make him throw it over the middle of the plate. Let's see if we can get him in trouble. Let's see if we can get him reeling um, and and. And just try, like you said, to avoid the edges is pretty much what we're going to try to do. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Banks today. Okay, Brody Breck gets a start on the mound for your team. Yeah, we need we need a good start out of Brody. It'd be awesome to have a good start out of Brody. But you know, if it's if it's not, um, you know, we've got Savory, we've got Ben Dete. You can go back with Jack Young. Anthony Watts could probably give you an inning. Gannon Archer hasn't been used so. I think you will see um, a pretty quick, you know, quick trigger if things don't look good, especially with you know Brody nursing uh, a nagging injury, you know, that isn't um, 100%. So uh, he told me yesterday he felt really good and you know wanted the ball and he you know was ready to go. So um, if he is, you know, that'll be a good thing. It'd be awesome if we could get four or five. Uh, six innings out of Brody, but if not, we'll go with um, with those guys. More than likely, you'll see you'll see Savory early, um, if, if and just let Aaron go as uh, as long as he can. And but if not, you know we can just run inning, inning, inning. And I think Ben Detake could get up to 40 pitches since he hadn't pitched yet, um, if we needed to. And that might be a play that you see today too. So we'll, we definitely want to get Ben in there. We we know we're going to get Aaron in there, and and then if uh, Archer can get in. That would be good too, but um, you know, also knowing that they have a 
a predominantly righty lineup. Um, Jack Young is always a great matchup to the righties. Uh, what's your view on Rutgers in this final game of this series? Did, does your team have them reeling? Do you expect them to come out punching? If we jump on them early, are we going to knock them out? What do you think, Coach? Well, I think they're going to come out punching. I mean, they're going to they're they're going to come out and fight hard. And I know uh, Coach Owens for a long time, and he, he was he was. Uh, he was still talking to him in left field when I left after the interviews yesterday. So uh, they're going to come out. They're going to come out and fight. You know that. And they're and, and they're just so talented. I mean, that's the, the other thing. Um, that's the other thing is that, you know, we've held them down pretty doggone good. You know, I mean, it, it, they, ha they haven't had to play here with the win, and I think that affected their hitters. And it was super cold both days, which really neutralizes the hitting. We've talked about that. Um, we know we know what they can do offensively. You know, I mean, they're leading the league for a reason, and all the numbers that they put up. Um, today is a, a, a different day. I mean, the sun's out. Um, it's it's not as cold. I mean, it's going to get you know maybe close to 60. The wind the wind hasn't changed though. The wind is still blowing. Um, you know, from left to right, same as it has all weekend. It's not quite as strong, but it's still a factor. Um, Balls will carry a little bit more to left field today and center field, but not, you know it isn't going to be helpful. Uh, you're going to have to really hit it, but it, I've seen some guys hit it out to left in batting practice um, from both teams. Not many, but I mean, if they were crushed, they 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 can get out. And um, you know we're going to need to pitch well, and and that's the other side. I think we've had a good plan, and Sean had a good plan um, for Rutgers, and when we were able to execute it, um, it worked pretty well. Great opportunity for your team today, Coach. Good luck. Let's take it to the Scarlet Knights. All right. Thanks a lot, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show in Iowa City. We're moments away from first pitch. It's the series finale between Iowa and Rutgers. The Hawkeyes looking for a sweep. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com Best Value Brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and type our car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Brennan Derigi and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon in gorgeous Iowa City. We're getting set for first pitch between Rutgers and Iowa this afternoon. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Iowa looking for the sweep over Rutgers today. Brennan, uh, blood in the water for the Hawks to attack and jab at the Scarlet Knights early. Don't take the foot off the gas today. No doubt, no doubt. And obviously all week, we, all we've heard about is Rutgers offense. We're expecting a little bit of a punch back here, but so far this weekend, it's all been about the Hawkeyes offense. Putting up all those runs throughout the last two games. It's super exciting to see the Hawkeye offense come alive in a big, big 10 matchup. Yeah, Michael Seegers has been really good at the bottom of the order. Kyle Huxdorf, uh, as I was following the game yesterday, Yesterday, I saw him come up with the bases loaded. He's deadly with the bases loaded. Hits the grand slam. Uh, yesterday, it's it's almost as if just getting Petey back in the lineup, flipped the switch back on for the Iowa offense. No doubt. He's been the catalyst all year for him. Obviously, a really, really dangerous hitter in the Big Ten. But allowing him to do his thing and get out there and not feel like he has to do too much, 
because of the help he's had at the bottom with Gable Mitchell, Michael Seegers, and Cade Moss in that regard has been huge for the entire top of the order as well. Brody Brecht will start for Iowa today. What do you expect to see from Brody, Brennan? Yeah, obviously he's got that electric fastball that he's kind of shown and he's known for, and that's his bread and butter. But also with that, he's got that upper 80s to low 90s slider and hoping to see him flash both those pitches for strikes and come right at these Rutgers hitters, keep them off balance. Outstanding crowd on hand today at Banks. Beautiful day in Iowa City. Iowa looking for the sweep of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights to continue building on their momentum as we draw near the end of this homestand. Iowa 21 and 15, Rutgers 23 and 15. We'll be back with starting lineups and first pitch right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks. Compare with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva AgriScience. Ah, that's it. I'm going for a pretzel. The pick is in. Optonite technology from Corteva AgriScience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. National Anthem is complete, inching closer to the start of this afternoon's game. Iowa won on Friday night 8-1 to one, and then beat Rutgers by 10 yesterday 15-5 to five in a high-scoring affair, at least from the Iowa standpoint of things. And then you think about today's game, the way Iowa's offense has been going, no reason to believe that the Hawks won't score quite a few runs today. Rutgers coming into the series offensively as the best in the Big Ten. Iowa's held them to six runs over the course of two games. You expect that they'll probably have a little bit of charge and a little bit of pep in their step today to avoid the sweep. No doubt. I think that after it's always hard to beat a team three times, but obviously with the law averages and this offense being so strong and so aggressive throughout the entire year that I expect to see Rutgers' best punch offensively. Seeing them kind of switch up the lineup a little bit, moving Doucette, keeping him in the three-hole, but Corota Grauer, their best hitter to the two-hole after the four-base day yesterday where he reached safely four times. Also moving Cohen down a little bit in the lineup. I think switching things up is just going to give them a little bit of an advantage and wake those bats up a little bit, so I expect to see their best punch. This is Rutgers' starting lineup today under the direction of head coach Steve Owens in his fifth season. Cameron Love, the second baseman, will lead things off. Josh Kuroda Grauer, who entered the uh, the weekend as the Big Ten's best hitter, uh, entered at 455. He's currently at 451, still atop the Big Ten. He'll bat second, the shortstop. Batting third at first base is Ty Doucette. Middle of the order for the Scarlet Knights, Tony Santamaria at third. Trevor Cohen in right. Pete DeRocher in center. 7-8-9, Johnny Volpe in left. The DH is Pete Chufreda. And the catcher batting ninth is Jackson Natilli. Iowa defensively today as they take the field. On the infield, left to right, Raider Tello at third. Michael Seegers at short. Gable Mitchell at second base. Davis Koppel start at first. In the outfield left to right, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf, and Andy Nelson. And the catcher today is the veteran, the captain, Cade Moss, and he will catch Iowa's starting pitcher today, Brody Brecht, the right-handed sophomore from Ankeny. Brody is 0-2 on the season, still seeking his first win. This will be his 10th start. He's got a 491 ERA, 40 and a third innings pitched. He struck out 72 batters, walking 32. Opponents hitting 218 against Brody. And as much as Coach Heller talked about uh, the pitcher for Rutgers, at, at any moment he could find it and he could uh, return to form, the same can be said about Brody on the mound today. No doubt. Obviously looking for his first win, but the stats aren't indicative of the stuff that he brings to the mound. Absolutely electric fastball. 
seen up to 100, 101 miles an hour. I think today we'll see him about 95 to 97, and then he's obviously got that off speed. He's flashing it right now already at 87 to 91 miles an hour, which is super encouraging. Excited to see Brody take on this high-power offense. It's going to be a really good battle here. Grandstand filling up over to the right, doing the same uh, behind the Rutgers dugout over to the left. The, the seat backs are occupied by a number of fans wearing black and gold directly below us and right behind home plate. Iowa will have uh, will finish their home stand on Tuesday with Milwaukee in town, 6.05 first pitch. Currently, Iowa 3-0 on their home stand after dropping last weekend's series at Ohio State. Looking to sweep the Rutgers Scarlet Knights today, but as Brennan and I have talked about, you expect Rutgers a, a tough uh, team to, to really fight back. Coach Heller and his team is expecting the same. Cade Moss throws it down to second. We're getting ready for the first pitch of this afternoon's game. Here comes Cameron Love, starting second baseman for the Scarlet Knights, batting 342. He has started all 38 games for Rutgers. He's in the box, batting from the right side as Brecht is ready. Out of the windup, here's the first pitch from Brody. That's in there for a strike on the inside corner. We're underway right on time in Iowa City, 105. Wind in the fire from Brecht, high and out for a ball. There's got to be an added sense of comfortability here for Brody throwing to Cade Moss back in the lineup for the Hawkeyes. Super encouraging just for Hawk fans in general, but just after all those starts that he had last year, all 16 starts for Brody Brecht with that battery with Cade Moss. It's going to be good to see that battery back in action today as well. I think that's a really underrated, undervalued uh, notion that you're making there, Brennan, the, the comfortability factor to throw to a catcher that you've thrown to for so long. No doubt, especially with Cade Moss back there. He's a workhorse. He's a grinder, a Juco guy as well, and somebody that just puts in all the hard work for the pitchers and has a lot of trust in this, from this pitching staff. Brody with an early strikeout of Cameron Love through that slider right by him, nibbled the edge, and Love went right over the top of it, one down. Really encouraging pitch there, flashing both pitches, fastball and breaking ball for a strike. 89 miles an hour on the black. Great, great sign early here in this ballgame for Brody Brecht in his outing today. Iowa wearing their Sunday best today with the gold tops and the black script Iowa angled across the chest. White pants with the black ball caps in the field. Here's Josh Carota Grauer, half swing. He went through the zone. Brody had him fooled to start the at-bat. Rutgers in all black uniforms with their red trim, their red R logo on the right sleeve. They've got the Scarlet Knight logo, the, the masked knight over their heart. Black baseball pants with a red and white stripe down the side, red numbers and white trim for Rutgers. I think those are pretty sharp uniforms for Rutgers today. I agree. I think this combo is a little bit better than the black and red that we saw on yeah. Friday night. No balls and two strikes. Brody winds and fires. Swing and a miss. He got Corota Grauer. It's a drop third strike. Moss will throw it down to first. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Brody in today's start. Obviously, the focus is on getting Corota Grauer out with that 455 batting average. Excuse me, 451 batting average. But Brody took the slider there, tripled up on it. Three sliders at 89 to 90 miles an hour, all outside the zone, and Corota Grauer couldn't do anything with it. Absolutely fooled him on all three of those pitches. Ty Doucette is the batter. He'll go from the left side, swings at the first pitch, and knocks it foul off the screen to the left. Doucette's a very good hitter for the Scarlet Knights, batting 350. Up to eight home runs now. He has a couple in this series. Hit a monster one on Friday, had one yesterday as well. No balls and a strike. Brecht out of the windup. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Brecht's got that slider working again. That pitch middle, middle there, but 89 miles an hour. Too, too firm and too much movement for him to do set to turn around. Heater or slider? I think you got to go back to the slider. 0-2. Oh, Swing and a miss. Low and out. Brody Brecht strikes out the side. How about that start? It brings the Hawkeye fans onto their feet. Nothing doing for Rutgers in the top of the first. Andy Nelson, Sam Peterson, and Raider Tello will come to the plate for the black and gold in the bottom half of the inning. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Brown Deer Golf Club offers a pure golf experience. Manicured bent grass fairways with tees and greens carved into gracefully rolling landscape. Challenging, yet extremely playable. 
Improve your game with PGA instruction and our full-service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making health care better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to Wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. If you or someone you know needs support now, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. Wonderful start for Brody Brecht. Strikes out the side against three really good Rutgers Scarlet Knights hitters. And that's got Banks charged up quite a bit as Andy Nelson will lead off for the Hawkeyes in the bottom of the first inning. Christian Coppola is the pitcher uh, for Rutgers today. He's the starter. Coppola is a right-handed sophomore from Galloway, New Jersey, making his 11th start of the season. He's got a 4-3 and three record, 658 ERA in 39 and two-thirds innings. He struck out 41, but he's walked 29, which is a team high, so he sort of sprays it around, and this feels like a good matchup for Iowa's disciplined approach. Absolutely. This The key to today's game and the key to getting Kapola off the mound as early as possible is to hold your zone and hold the pitches in the middle of the plate. He's going to come with that good fastball, 89 to 92, but it's got a lot of ride, so the, the Iowa hitters are going to have to get on top of that pitch often throughout the game, and then obviously fight off that curveball, which is 77 to 80 miles an hour. He's going to use as his put out pitch. He deals a strike to Andy Nelson. Low outside corner from Andy, the starting right fielder for the Hawkeyes today. Coppola's 0 1, looped back, foul ball, nothing and two. As he approaches the rubber, he stands on the first base side and is angled over, looking into the Rutgers dugout to the left. No balls and two strikes. The pitch to Nelson. Up and in. That's a ball. I'm expecting to see Coppola go and try to establish that fastball early. A lot of fastballs. He's tripled up here to Andy trying to get those hitters on time with his heater and then maybe the second or third time around use that big breaking ball. There is a breaking ball. Inside corner called third strike. Nelson is caught looking. We've got four outs recorded in this game. They've all been strikeouts. <laughs> Coppola was named the Big Ten Pitcher of the Week in February. Fired six innings and struck out nine at Old Dominion. Picked up a win against UConn. Five and two-thirds, three runs, and six strikeouts in that outing against the Huskies. Here's Sam Peterson, Iowa's starting left fielder. Hard fastball for a strike on the outer half. The 0-1, grounded third base side. Nice backhand stop by Santa Maria. He'll throw it across, and a pick out of the turf by Doucette records the out. Petey got a hold of that one, but a nice play at third. Good swing there on the breaking ball. He got a middle-middle breaking ball, took his best swing on it. Pulled it just not enough into the gap right there, right to the third baseman. Ex encouraging to see Petey run down the baseline hard, though, after two or three weeks off of injury, that shin splints as well. That's right. Good contact. Here's Raider Tello. Base is empty and two outs for Raider. First pitch is on the outer edge. That's a strike. Both pitchers dominating the strike zone right now, throwing a lot of strikes. Just off the plate, a little further outside that time. It's one and one now. A ball and a strike. The pitch from Coppola is outside. Two and one. Raiders having himself quite a weekend. Yesterday driving in three or four Hawkeye hitters, especially with that double, that big time double to break open the game in the left center gap. Two balls and a strike. Tello fouls it back to the pad. It's two and two 
15 runs for Iowa yesterday despite the extremely cold temperatures. No doubt, and I think that the biggest part of that was the bottom of the lineup yesterday getting on a total of nine times between the three hitters, Gable Mitchell, Michael Seegers, and Cade Moss between two hits per each guy and a free base. 2-2 two -two to Raiders, swings over the top of the breaking ball. No runs, no hits, no and that'll do it for the first inning, a very fast first inning at Banks. Five strikeouts combined by these starting pitchers. We'll go to the second right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Top of the second in Iowa City. Brody Brecht out for another inning. Struck out the side. In the first, so he'll take the middle of the order. Santa Maria, Cohen, and DeRocher here in the second. Santa Maria, the fine third baseman for the Scarlet Knights, in the box, batting from the right side. First pitch from Brody. Swing and a miss. High heater. Threw it right by him. Really encouraging to see that as well. 98 miles an hour at the top of the zone. Really good life. Electric fastball there. O1 is hit high in the air to right. Nelson moving over towards the line. Andy still running, still running in foul ground. Andy made the play, and then he crashed into the half wall. That's a big first out. That ball just kept moving and moving and moving. Really gritty catch there, using the crosswinds from left to right. Foul pull to foul pull. That ball kept pushing towards the bullpen. Andy toughing up, banging into that wall, making that big time catch right there for the Hawkeyes. That brings up Trevor Cohen. Starting right fielder for Rutgers. Left-handed hitter. Fastball in from Brody. Cohen has been in the, uh, he's been the second batter in the lineup. The first two games of the series moves down to fifth. Today, the Hawks have held him in check. He was hitless on Friday. Here comes the 1-0 pitch from Brecht. Ground ball left side. Seegers backhands. Deep from the hole. Long throw to first. Just a touch late. Cohen beats it out for the first hit of today's game. An infield single. Sometimes moving around in the order is all you need to get going as an offensive player. It's less of a demotion and maybe just a new face or a new presence in the lineup. Getting to watch your teammates face the starting pitcher first was well in there. It obviously paid off for Doucette getting, I'm sorry, DeRocher getting that hit there. Excuse me, Cohen. DeRocher's up now. Starting center fielder for Rutgers. Cohen with some speed at first base, has a good lead, reads a downward angle. Moss picks it, throws to second. Got him! What a recovery from Cade Moss! Big time play there by Cade Moss, able to pick that ball off the dirt. Scampers away from a little bit, but he's able to get up on his feet, barehand that ball, and throw him out. Good tag by Michael Seegers to hang in there as well. Captain Cade, two down, base is empty now. Pete DeRocher in, one ball and no strikes. The pitch from Brecht before had been outside and low. Here's the 1-0 delivery. 
Popped up, shallow left. Here comes Sam Peterson. Michael Seegers goes back. It's Gable Mitchell in shallow left center. From his position at second, he makes the play to get Iowa through the second inning. We'll go to the bottom half of the second. Davis Kopp, Reese Moore, Kyle Huxdorf come to the plate for Iowa. The game's moving right along. Scoreless with Rutgers. Back in just a moment, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Middle of the order coming to the plate for Iowa. Davis Cobb, Reese Moore, and Kyle Hugstorf. They did some damage yesterday for the black and gold. Take on Christian Coppola, who had a couple of strikeouts in the first. We had some nice defensive plays. Obviously good pitching to start today. Coppola got through the first on 11 pitches. And we're set for action in the bottom of the second. Out the Here's Davis Cobb. Sort of carving out his role at first base. Started there several times this season. Coppola out of the windup. First pitch to Davis. It's a high strike. Nice day in Iowa City. Not a cloud in the sky. Wind blowing from left to right in just a touch compared to the last two days. But not nearly as strong. Breaking ball dropped in for a strike. Nothing in two on Cop. Hoping to see Cop build off that two-hit performance yesterday and obviously that late RBI hit on Friday night. I think today is going to be a good day for Cop. 0-2. Oh, Breaking ball out. It started out and it moved even further out. Davis knew it right away, ball one. Here's the one, two, outside, two and two. Close. Really good take there by Davis. Trusted that that had enough spin on it. <laughs> Three breaking balls in a row. Here comes the two, two. Ooh, mm -hmm. up and in. Almost hit him. Full count. Great start to this bottom of the second inning here as well. Getting a full count. Fighting back from a 0-2 count to a full count here for Davis Cop. See if he can be rewarded. The 3-2. Foul tip. Went back to the breaking ball, and Davis stays alive. Another 3-2. Grounded foul over to the left. Good hang by Cop. How cool has the progression of Davis Cop's offense been throughout the year? The first two or three weeks he was hitting in the low twos, mid to low twos, and now he's leading the team in RBIs. Yep, ever since that Ole Miss series, he has taken off. Three balls and two strikes. We'll do it again. Called third strike. Breaking ball in the zone, and Cop is down on strikes. Wasn't expecting that. Good pitch from Coppola. Got the upper half, upper third. One down for the Hawks in the second. Here's Reese Moore. Reese got on a few times yesterday. Hear that base is clearing double in the right center gap as well. In the later innings of yesterday's game, that really busted the game open. He's had a nice series, been uh, on base several times. 
1-0 pitch to him. Breaking ball, upper half of the zone. That's a called strike. Shift on for Rutgers on the infield. Slid over to the right. Fastball for a strike up and in. One and two, the Hawkeye Bats trying to figure out Coppola, just seeing what he has to offer right now. He's had a nice mix. One ball and two strikes. The pitch to Reese. Ooh. Hit well to right, but that will hook foul. Had the distance. Too far out in front. We'll do it again at one and two. Out of the windup, the right-hander deals. Swing and a miss. When we got the scouting report today on Capola a little bit earlier, it was interesting to see only two pitches flagged on the scouting report. Generally in the Big Ten, when you get a starting pitcher, you're going to see three, four pitch mix. But when you see that there's only two pitches on there, you know that one of them's plus plus, and he's been showing that really good slider often today. You can throw it to both sides of the plate and keep those hitters off balance. Feels like the makings of a Friday night matchup, no uh, doubt. Brennan. These starting pitchers are on a tear to start. Here's Kyle Huxdorf. Swings through a high fastball. Four strikeouts for Coppola with two outs in the bottom of the second. A one to Huck. That's a low strike. Nothing in two. Just pound in the strike zone. The 0 2 outside with the slider. Hawkeyes looking for their first base runner this afternoon. One ball, two strikes to Huxdorf. Grand slam yesterday. The one-two delivery. Outside again, two and two. Wind in the fire on the 2-2. Huxdorf takes it inside corner, strike three. Coppola strikes out the side, and we're through two in Iowa City, scoreless with the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Back in just a moment, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against high and type our car and driver January 2023. Based on 2023 brand image words from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. Scoreless as we get to the third inning. Both pitchers off to a great start. Brody Brecht, Iowa's starter, has three strikeouts. Coppola for Rutgers has five. And he's, uh, he's given Iowa something to think about. As they sit in the dugout, waiting for their next opportunity to hit. 7-8-9 for Rutgers in the third. No score in the early going. The batter is Johnny Volpe. Swing and a miss to start his at bat. Brecht goes slider on the first pitch. Volpe's had a solid weekend. Two hits on Friday night and then following it up with two hits yesterday in the bottom of the line. That's huge for Rutgers offense so far. Another sharp slider from Brecht. Strike two. Kind of working him backwards a little bit here, uh, Brennan. Mm -hmm. Here's the 0-2. 
Swing and a miss. Good start to the third for Brody. That's a Hawkeye t-shirt. I haven't seen so many discouraged hitters and shaking heads from both sides in a long time. This is an interesting matchup so far. We've got a pitcher's duel shaking out as well, so far. No matter where they peel off, Brennan, whether it's the first base dugout or the third base dugout, getting carved up. Here is Jafreda, the DH left-handed hitter. Ooh, he's hit by the pitch. Did he commit to swinging at it, though? No. And they're going to award him first base. Umpires are going to come together, and this will be interesting. Interesting matchup. Side note, Pete Chufrade is a grad transfer from Lafayette College in Easton, Pennsylvania, which happens to be the alma mater of Sean McGrath, pitching coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Oh, there you go. Good note. Some history there. Didn't really make an effort to get out of the way. Coach Heller's talking to Cade Moss about what happened there. It was a slider. It was just too far inside. And what will they decide here? Oh, they're going to bring him back. Bring him back into the box. Now, is that a strike? I believe it is. Okay. A little bit of new life for Brody. That, that pitch wasn't that far inside. It, it certainly was in, but... He got his hands going and went into it like that. No balls in a strike now as Jufreda comes back into the box. The pitch from Brody. Ground ball right side. Mitchell backhands in shallow right center. He'll make the long throw to first and retire Jufreda. Gable made that look a little bit more uh, difficult, but I think the ball was skipping. Hopping, yeah, yeah, skipping a little funny to him. Big swing of events there. Instead of having a man on first with one out, we get the ground ball there off from Jufreda, and now we've got two outs and nobody on for the Hawkeyes. Bottom of the order, Jackson Natilli steps up, 257 batter. Stands in from the right side. Struck out three times on Friday. Breck delivers slider low for ball one. He'll wind and fire. Inside, almost hit him, ball two. Back him off the plate just a touch. First time we've seen Brody fall behind in the count like this. Two balls and no strikes to the nine hitter. That's low again, ball three. Brody's been efficient. This will be pitch number 25 in the third. 25 total for his outing, and we are in the third inning. You can find the zone on the 3-0 to Natilli. There it is, strike one. Natilli tossed his bat. Yeah. He better start picking that up, and the clock should get starting. He'll get back in the box, get a little assistance from his teammate in the on-deck circle. Three balls and a strike. The pitch from Brody. Ground ball up the middle. A high chopper to Mitchell at second. He's got it. He'll throw it to Kopp. Another 1-2-3 inning for Brody Brecht. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Scoreless with the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Openall is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. 
Brennan Derigi and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Banks. Bottom of the third, no score between Iowa and Rutgers. Brennan, it's been a pleasure having you in the booth with us uh, this weekend. You've done a great job, and I, I don't say, I, you know, don't take that lightly. Uh, you've really filled in nicely for John Evans, who will be back uh, this week. Looking forward to having John back. We'll see if he's got a tan. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope he does. He's just spent a few days in Hawaii. Uh, well, I'm sure he'll have a few stories to share with us. But you've done a great job filling in, Brennan. Really appreciate it. And uh, excited to follow your journey uh, as your season starts up next week. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me in the booth and filling in, obviously, big shoes to fill with John Evans. He's got the years under his belt. He's been working hard at it and taking care of all the guys on the team. So just appreciate you guys having me up here and having a lot of fun doing it. I'll add this. You're undefeated so far. And... Uh, 3-0, and Brennan, and so let's get you to 4-0, and and then we can welcome you back another time. How about that? <laughs> Sounds good. Gable Mitchell leads off Iowa's third inning. He'll go from the left side. Swing Ooh. and a miss. He's down in the count, nothing in two. I think that was our first look at a third pitch there, a changeup, it looks like, on the outside half, outer half. He only throws it about 7 to 8% of the time, but all to left-handed hitters, which is obviously what Gable's standing in there today. Gable fights that off. A high pitch. Fouled it back, nothing in two. Iowa has struck out five times in the first two innings. More about the pitcher than the batter, I think, at this point. Uh, Coppola seems to be on. Here's the 0-2, way outside, ball one. Uh, Coach Heller talked about it. He, he sprays it a little bit. He's, you know, He has a 4-3 and three record, was supposed to be their ace this year, and off to a slow start, and unfortunately seems to... Be that he's finding it today against the Hawks. The one-two, grounded foul to the Rutgers dugout over the left. Yeah, especially if you look at the stat line so far this year, 39 innings pitched <clears throat> with 41 strikeouts. Anytime you have more strikeouts than innings pitched, your your stuff is there. You obviously have got swing and miss pitches, but he's also had 29 free passes and eight hit by pitches. So clearly that's been the bugaboo throughout the year. Mitchell stays alive as Coppola went breaking ball around the shins. Gable committed to it. Hit it foul. One ball and two strikes. Third baseman, Santa Maria, really protecting the line over there. The one-two, mm. swing and a miss. High heater out of the zone. Five strikeouts in a row now for Coppola. Looks to me like these Hawkeye hitters are a little bit in between, ahead of the fastball, excuse me, behind the fastball, ahead on the breaking ball. I'd love to see some of these Hawkeyes go up there and just start hunting one pitch. They've been getting a steady diet of both pitches throughout the entire bats, and I'd love to see whichever pitch that they think they can hit harder to sit on and just wait for that at bat because this has been a tough showing so far for the offense. Michael Seegers comes up. Breaking ball for a strike. Really has the Iowa hitters guessing. Working quickly, the 0-1. Hit Michael. Got him in the arm. And Seegers will take first base. Sometimes that's all you need to get going as well as an offense. Just see some guy get to first base. And obviously, Seegers has been doing that really well throughout the weekend. He's starting to get hot for the Hawkeyes at the right time, and it's great to see him on first base. Yeah, first base runner of the day for Iowa. Seager's hit by the pitch. He's got that protective uh, gear around his elbow and, and upper arm. And Seager's gets to first. Here's Cade Moss. He'll start behind the plate. Good lead by Seegers at first. Fastball out to Moss for ball one. We'll see what kind of move Coppola has and if the Hawkeyes feel like they can run on him. Cade's batting 250 on the season. He's drawn six walks, though. 1-0 is in the dirt. Seegers takes off. Natilli throws it down, and not in time. Off the bag as well. Stay right there, Michael. <laughs> they tried to bait him into thinking that the ball went into center field. Seegers with a good read on the pitch in the dirt. Really, really veteran read there. As soon as the, he saw the downward angle of the pitch into the dirt, bounce off Natilli's chest protector, he was already halfway to second base. Nothing the catcher could have done. So now a runner in scoring position with less than two outs for Iowa in the third. Two balls, no strikes for Cade Moss. Here's the pitch. That's in the dirt again, ball three. 
So as Coppola has gone to the stretch, he's missed on three in a row. Red light for Cade with the top of the order, Andy Nelson on deck, and a 3-0 count. Here's the pitch. Low and out again, ball four. Great job by Cade Moss to draw the four-pitch walk. And now a couple of hawks on base for Andy Nelson. We'll see what adjustments Iowa has made the second time through the order now. Absolutely. But can't overstate enough how important and how crucial the bottom of the lineup has been for the Hawkeye offense. Coming through again today to start the third game of this series with two veteran Hawkeyes getting on base for the Hawks. Mound visit for Rutgers early on in the third with a runner at first and second for Iowa and one out. Andy Nelson will be the batter. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM Big Ten Radio Channel 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games and interviews and analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. Iowa will host Milwaukee on Tuesday night at 6.05 here at Banks before heading west and taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers in Lincoln for a three-game set next weekend. Trying to continue the momentum. As Iowa on the verge of a sweep of Rutgers this weekend after winning the first two games. Threatening now in the third, Andy Nelson up. Runners at first and second with one out. Middle infield pinching for Rutgers. First pitch to Andy is low for ball one. Really, really professional take there. That slider showed strike for about 50, 55 feet and then broke off below the zone and Andy was able to hold off on it. Six pitches out of the zone consecutively from Coppola. One ball, no strikes. The pitch to Nelson. Low and out, ball two. You don't want to make Andy shoulder the bat. He's had a hot bat uh, the past few weeks, but Coppola's struggling to find it now in the third all of a sudden. And the dangerous Sam Peterson looms in the on-deck circle as well. That's right. 2-0. Inside, take. ball three. That was right around, but Andy had a good read right out of the hand. Really good take. I, I imagine he's got a red light here with... 3-0. Coppola struggling to find it as well as having Sam Peterson behind him to protect him on deck. Long pause from Coppola. Taking his time. The 3-0 is across for a strike. It's 3-1. 86 miles an hour there. Took something off. Mm -hmm. Three balls and a strike. Coppola comes set. Checks on Seegers at second. Here's the pitch to Andy. Outside, ball four, and the bases will be loaded for Sam Peterson as he walks to the batter's box. Three free bases for Iowa in the inning. Got to make this hurt, Brennan. Big time, big time. Also, a shameless plug for the coaching staff, obviously, in the day and age with the transfer portal, having the guys on base right now, every single Hawkeye on base has put in three to four years, stuck it out throughout the program, and then being able to get on base. Just shows how Marty and Rick, the Heller ball in general, has just created such a good offensive culture and just a good culture in general. Great point, Brennan. Bases loaded with one out for Sam Peterson. First pitch, PD takes outside. Oh, he wanted to swing at that, but good thing he didn't. It was out of the zone. That was ground ball central, wasn't it? Absolutely. There's not much he could have done with that pitch. One ball, no strikes. The pitch to PD. Mm. That's on the edge for a strike. One and one. I like that pit, that take there from Sam Peterson. Tough pitch, obviously a strike over the edge of the plate, but not much he could have done with that one. One one. Outside, ball two. Great take. A little bit of action going now in the Rutgers bullpen. We'll get that name to you when we see it. I think we got a left hander up. Capola, the right-hander on the mound right now for Rutgers. Two balls and a strike to Peterson. Ground ball to third. Mm. He juggles it, steps on third, throws to first. It's late. Seegers comes down the line and scores. And what appeared to be a sure double play because of the bobble, Iowa has the lead. 
a day like today with the pitcher's duel looming, anytime you can get a break from the defense or just in general off three bases, we'll take it. And obviously the third baseman juggled that ball a little bit at third base and wasn't able to make it, turn up the double play. One to nothing, Iowa in the third. Raider Tello comes up, scored as a fielder's choice. No error on the play. Did record an out. First pitch to Raider is up and in around the forearms. Big emphasis in this offensive slump to get the Hawkeyes back on track as two out RBIs. So let's see if they can continue that trend throughout the weekend. 1-0 to Tello. Hit well Ooh. to right. Carrying well. Back towards the wall, towards the track. It's off the wall. Right fielder kick. Come up with it. Here comes Nelson. He scores. Petey scores. Tello digging for third. He's safe with a two RBI. Triple to right. <laughs> Raider Tello triple. Clearing the bases. Two RBIs. Anytime we can see the wheels of Raider running around to third base, we'll take it. Love that swing by Raiders, sticking on that slider and hitting it hard the other way off the fence. Three nothing Hawks in the third. The right fielder Cohen with an outstanding effort. He crashed into the wall, couldn't come up with it. And Iowa breaks through in the third. Really, really professional approach there by Raider Tello. Not trying to do too much and try to get pull happy with that slider. Got that slider out over the plate where he could get the barrel to it and did some damage. Natilli will go out and talk with Coppola. That's probably a delay tactic to get that reliever ready in the bullpen. Looks like we've got number 11, a redshirt freshman, Donovan Zask. <clears throat> um, Zach, excuse me. Uh, pretty electric arm, 93 to 96, but has a lot of spray in him. There's a lot of free bases so far this year for him. Finally break up that mound visit and get back to action for Davis Kopp, who will bat right on cue, Brennan. You talk about the the two-out hitting for Iowa. It was such a big part of the team last year, and now Raider Tello picking it up and hitting that triple off the right field wall. Absolutely. Marty preaches day in and day out. A uh, tactic he calls doing your one ninth, not trying to do more than your own piece, trying to just do your portion of the offense. And every, obviously each guy getting on base is a great example of that. And then having Raider be able to go up there and do his one ninth and drive in two runs is huge. We'll have time called. This will be an official mound visit now as Steve Owens is out of the Rutgers dugout. He could be taking the ball from Capola. I'm thinking of the mound visit. I think the mound visit was earlier this inning, so he has to come out now, doesn't he? I think, was the mound visit a catcher or was it a coach? I'm pretty sure it was just a, was it a catcher? Yeah, I can't remember if that was last inning or this inning. Natilli had went out there just a moment yeah. ago, but we'll see. They're taking the ball from Capola. That's going to do it. Wow, he had a great first two innings, but Iowa gets to him in the third. And they'll take a pitching change. They'll make a pitching change with Iowa leading three to nothing. We'll take a pitching change break. We're back in just a moment. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Three nothing Iowa in the third. The Hawkeyes have broken through into the scoreboard uh, with just one hit in the inning, but a ton of free bases have taken Coppola out of the game. They'll bring in a left-handed redshirt freshman from Scotch Plains, New Jersey. This is Donovan Zach. Zach is towards the top of their uh, bullpen. 
in terms of uh, relief uh, appearances, this will be appearance number 15 with a 4.02 ERA, 15 and two thirds innings pitched. He struck out 19. He's walked nine. He's given up a little bit of damage, though, of the 12 hits that he's allowed. Seven have gone for extra base hits, including three home runs. Opponents batting 2.14 against Zach, but with 15 appearances, Brennan, and 15 and two-thirds, you can't imagine that he'll go very far into this game. Uh, either way, either the Hawks will get him out, or maybe just an inning or two here. Absolutely. I think the Rutgers bullpen is kind of going to piece together the rest of this game. A lot of platooning, trying to get with matchups, especially with left-handed Reese Moore on deck. I'm sure that's why they went to Zach. Cop was swinging for the fences there. Comes up empty. Two outs for Davis with Tello at third. Lefty on righty matchup now. Another run out there. The 0-1 to Cop, swing and a miss. Boy, this is a, an electric fastball from Zach. I was going to say the same thing. 94 miles an hour there at the top of the zone. 2,500 spin rate as well and 20 inches of vertical break. So that ball is going to appear to be 2-3. to three. Baseball's higher than it actually is throughout the entire motion. The 0-2 to Cop. Called third strike. Outer edge. And Davis is down on strikes for the third out, but three runs on one hit for the Hawkeyes. It was a two RBI triple from Raider Tello to give Iowa this three to nothing lead. We're back for the fourth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. All right, we're back with Hawkeye Baseball here in the top of the fourth inning. Brody Brecht out for his fourth inning of work, looking to continue on with this super efficient day so far. He's only had a significantly low 26 pitches through three innings, which is the lowest he's had on the entire season. We're looking to see him establish that fastball and breaking ball back in the middle of the zone here, this top of the fourth inning. Up for Rutgers, towing in the batter's box is leadoff hitter, Number two, Cameron Love, as he looks at slider high there for the first pitch. Brody retired the Rutgers Scarlet Knights in order there. Nine batters face nine outs as he's facing the top of the lineup here in the top of the fourth. Second pitch there, slider on the inside corner, 88 miles an hour for strike two. He's got Cameron Love down in an 0-2 hole. Excuse me, that was 1-1 there. That second pitch called for a ball. Follows that up, tripling it up with a slider up top out of the outer edge. The 2-1 pitch, fastball down the middle. Swung on, grounded out to Michael Seegers, who run, makes a good run through play, steady glove, and then throws it, that ball out to Davis Cobb. Hits him in the chest for out number one. Shortstop, Josh. We've got Josh Kuroda Grouter towing in now for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights here. One out. Top of the fourth inning. Big first out for Brody. Second time through the order now for Rutgers. And guess what? Slider to Kuroda Grouter where Brody struck him out on three pitches and it was three sliders. I think the game plan is clear here. For Brecht against Kuroda Grouter as he throws his fourth slider of the day to him. I'm, excuse me, his fifth slider of the day to Kuroda Grouter. And for the first time, he didn't swing at it. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and one strike. Brody out of the windup. Here's the pitch. Ooh, just high. Good spot. Kuroda Grouter laid off. Two 
two one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. He buried that one. Really good slider there. Well off the plate. Trying to get Crota Grauer bright on that breaking pitch and got him to swing at that pitch. About six to seven balls below the strike zone. Two balls and two strikes. The wind up and the fire. Grounded foul over to the left. Still hasn't seen a fastball. It's been really a fastball and slider mix for Brody today. Not much of the splitter. Here comes the 2-2. Low and out. Ball three. Iowa leading 3-0 in the top of the fourth. Full count. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Really, really impressive sequence there. Trying to sneak the fastball by him at the 2-2 count. Ends up throwing a ball there and then comes back with a hard slider on the outside corner. Crotograu could not do anything with. Two down for Doucette. Brody's up to five strikeouts now. Two down, base is empty. Swing and a miss. That was the splitter. Low and in, that thing dropped right off the table. Splitter at 93 miles an hour there. Gross. No balls in a strike. Swing and a miss. Doubled it up. 92 miles an hour splitter, bottom of the zone. You have Doucette totally guessing. Now you go fastball, slider. What do you like, Brennan? I think you speed his bat up and throw the heater by him. 0-2. Oh, Ground ball right side. Cop cuts Good it off play. on the backhand. Pitches to Brecht, who's covering. And it's another 1-2-3 inning for Brecht and the Hawkeyes. This time in the fourth, Iowa consolidates the three runs they scored in the bottom of the third. It's 3-0 Iowa. We're back for the bottom of the fourth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% .9 reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hey, it's your friend, Social Media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. Talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. The Hawkeyes lead the Scarlet Knights this Sunday afternoon, three to nothing as we get to the bottom of the fourth. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball. It'll be Reese Moore, Kyle Huxdorf, and Gable Mitchell coming to the plate for Iowa. In the fourth, be facing Donovan Zach, who returns for the bottom of the fourth after getting Davis Kopp in his only action, his first action out of the bullpen, relieving Christian Coppola. Each team with one hit, but three runs for Iowa after the free bases were awarded. First pitch strike to Reese. High strikeout count so far for these offenses, but I always found a way to be productive when they do get some base runners. The 0-1 to Moore, swing and a miss on the uppercut hack, nothing in two. This is a tough matchup here for Moore, that left on left with that heater that's going to start right at his letters or right at his belt and then keep riding above the barrel. Big hole for Moore. Here's the 0-2. Outside, low, ball one. Went from Coppola, who was upper 80s, to Zach, who's now in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. But this is where Iowa can separate and, and break the chain even further. 
They can get to Zach. He goes with it over the head, wind up. <laughs> and kept the breaking ball high for ball two. Just something to throw off Reese. First off speed pitch we saw there. First look at it as a big 12 6 curveball. He brings Just left that, it high. He brings that down. Reese can give it a ride. Agreed. 2 2. Ooh. Swing and a miss. Up and in. Followed it up with a 95 mile an hour heater in on the hands on Reese, and there's just not much he could have done with that pitch. All right, here's Kyle Huckstorf. Center fielder, Kyle Huckstorf. Huck struck out in the second. Zach out of the windup. Fires, Kyle takes mm. it. It's called a strike. Huxworth didn't look pleased with that call. He got his hands going. He, he was afraid that he got called for going through the zone with the barrel of the bat. Uh -oh. Huck drives this, swung on, left center, but not uh. deep enough. DeRocher is there. He'll grab it for the second out. That crosswind's been killing balls in that left center gap all weekend. That ball is 102 miles an hour and looked like it had a chance, and it didn't even get to the warning track. Huck gave it a ride, but two down for Gable Mitchell. He'll have to flip over and go from the right side now. I think we got a Dan Gable appearance this weekend. Typically, we know where he sits over there to the right by the by the in the family section. It's packed here at Banks today. We'll be on the lookout for him. Fastball in there, nothing in one. Don't know if I can spot Coach Gable yet. The Hawkeye legend. I got him. You got him. Eyes on. He's locked in. I'm sure. <laughs> oh one. Gable hits foul over to the right. Nothing in two. I see him. Hoodie up. Yep, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hide a little bit in the stance. Can't blame him. Popular figure in Iowa City. Moved a statue. I know. That's crazy. 0-2. Oh, Swing and a miss. Gable chased one in the dirt. And that'll do it for the Hawks in the fourth. Nothing doing for Iowa. It's three to nothing. Hawks out in front. We'll be back for the fifth right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day healthcare needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. Three to nothing, Iowa in the fifth. Rutgers coming to the plate with the middle of their order due up. Santa Maria Cohen and DeRocher. Brody Brecht onto the mound. 40 pitches for Brody's, faced 12 batters. He struck out five, uh, five of them, allowed just one hit through four innings. Got Santa Maria to fly out to right in foul ground. Back in the second, there's a slider in the zone, nothing in one. Another slider. That one had a lot of movement on it. Drifted out of the zone one and one. Santa Maria got his hands moving forward towards the plate, but stopped him in time. One and one. 
Here's the pitch from Brody. Swing and a miss. Filthy on the outer edge. One and two. You can tell Brody's keeping these hitters guessing. He's throwing similar sliders, back-to-back -back pitches, and they're able to lay off one and not the other. It's just tough today for these Rutgers hitters. Spikes the one-two, and Cade knocks it down. At the splitter. Mm -hmm. Count even at two to start the fifth. Ground ball left side. Tello gives chase. It is foul. Wind picking up just a bit now. Out to right. First signs of life in the Hawkeye bullpen. Nobody significantly warming up, but just some pitchers down there moving their bodies, getting loose. 2-2 two -two from Brecht. This is hit high in the air to left. Peterson moving back. He's at the track. Sam still moving back, and he makes the catch. Right in front of the wall. Too high from Santa Maria, and the wind kept it up there, and Sam was able to get there and make the grab. Right fielder. Similar ball there to Kyle Huxdorf in the previous inning, 103 miles an hour to left field. Just nothing going over there with that crosswind. One out for Trevor Cohen. Left-handed hitter. Brody fires inside for ball one. one -0 is a fastball high and out. Two balls, no strikes. On Cohen, the five hitter for Rutgers. He does have the Scarlet Knights only hit today. He was caught stealing moments later. 2-0 pitch from Brecht. That's at the knees for a strike. Really good pitch there to get back into that count through that fastball low in the zone where there's not, mu not much doing for Trevor Cohen. See if Brody can even things up. The 2-1. Grounded to Tello at third. He slides to knock really it down. Play. He'll step. He'll throw. He'll get him at first. Heck of a play by Raider Tello at third. Brody's obviously been spectacular today, but having a little bit of defensive help behind him is big time for Brody as he continues to throw strikes and have his defense work behind him. Graceful by Raider. That doesn't come to <laughs> the mind too often, but he makes a nice play at third. Confident, controlled. Two down for DeRocher. We've got a Raider Tello triple and a graceful Raider Tello call today. <laughs> Didn't know I had that in the, in the bingo card That's for right. Raider Tello. It is, it is bingo Sunday here at the ballpark. <laughs> Boy, they'd, you'd have a pretty lucky card to have both of those crossed off by the fifth. 1-0 pitch from Brecht. Here it is. Called strike, 1-1. One and one. Got the outer edge on the slider. You think we got a Raider Tello stolen base in the cards as well? Hey, you know what? Three for three on odd Tello instances. That'd be okay. Try it out. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. 1-2, and two. boy. DeRocher's back foot came out from mm -hmm. under him. 1-2, and two, Brody in the driver's seat. This is a really convicted Rutgers offense that swings about hard, and it looks like they're just confused and not sure if they want to swing or not throughout the day today. Ooh, check swing. They said he did not go. That was probably the first time we've seen him really be able to stop on a pitch that's out of the zone. 2-2. Two and two. Let's see what Brody has cooked up here. He'll wind and fire the 2-2. Two -two. Mm. Mm, off the plate again, 3-2. and two. Brody takes a walk behind the mound, now towing the rubber. Full count with two outs. Here's the pitch. Way outside. Ball four, lost him. First walk of the day issued by Brody, and it comes in the fifth. That's a positive sign uh, in the right direction for Brody. No doubt, and even to add upon that, 51 pitches for Brody here in the fifth inning, which is really, really encouraging for all Hawkeye fans, especially the Hawkeye bullpen. As, as Brennan mentioned, there's some bodies down there, but nobody throwing yet, which a good is sign. a great sign. Here's Johnny Volpe, the left fielder. Brody struck him out in the third. Feels an over-the-top, hard fastball for a strike.
Wind seems to have shifted a little bit. Less of that crosswind, more just straight in now from all sides of the field. A little bit out, chance to get it out to right the right corner, rather. Just a tough place to hit when yeah. the wind's blowing in. Makes the field feel like it's massive out there. Right, and, the, and there are a ton of right-handers in both lineups yeah. today, so uh, not many hitters are able to use the wind to their advantage going from the left side. You saw Tello's triple be guided out there. One ball and one strike. The pitch from Brecht outside, two and one. He's pulling a lot of the pitchers away now from the, mm -hmm. the right-handed hitters. As Brody gets amped up throughout his outing, sometimes he likes to pull off or try to reach in for a little extra velocity, and that's when he kind of yanks it. You're going to see here now, number 40, Cade Moss, the catcher, veteran catcher, probably seeing this a little bit, some of him pulling off of his shoulders and going out there to help Brody get back on track, more directional towards the home plate. Coach Heller in the pregame talked about uh, Brody's length of his outing today, and if, if things get a little dicey, that'd be a pretty quick hook. You want to bring Brody out when his confidence is high. It's He's certainly in a good spot now with two outs in the inning mm -hmm. and a 3 to nothing lead in the fifth, but just something to keep in mind. I think that's probably why we see some bodies in the bullpen, yeah. even though Brody hasn't faced many challenges in his outing so far. Two balls and a strike. Brecht out of the stretch, comes set. Here's the pitch. That's in the dirt, ball three. Much better direction-wise, obviously low there, but over the plate and firm, not yanking off as much as he has in the previous pitches. Looking to find the strike zone on the 3-1. Here it comes. Mm. Missed again, this time low in the dirt. Ball four, so back-to-back -back walks. And the Scarlet Knights have a little bit of traffic. First time since the second inning that they've had a base runner. And Chufredo will come up now, but first we'll have a discussion from pitching coach Sean McGrath. He'll head out to the mound and talk with Brody. Some scores from around the league today. Purdue got smacked by East Tennessee State at home. Well, it's still going on. It's 12 to two in the seventh. East Tennessee State out in front of Purdue by 10. Tight battle in Ann Arbor, Michigan, leading Ohio State five to three in the sixth. Penn State on top of Michigan State, seven to five. That's also in the sixth inning. Nebraska burying Maryland in their rubber match, 11 to four in the sixth in Lincoln. All tied up in Champaign, one to one between Northwestern and Illinois in the fourth inning. Minnesota 10 run to Indiana earlier today, 13 to two. They'll play another game of their doubleheader uh, starting at four o'clock today. Indiana beat Minnesota yesterday, seven to one. <clears throat> All right, two on, two out for Chufreda. First pitch from Brecht. That's in there, low inside corner, strike one. That mound visit paying off there already for a strike one. McGrath working on a little bit of mechanics that looked like with Brody, just kind of helping him out and guiding him back towards the strike zone. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Over the top of that, nothing in two. Shufreda limited at bats. Four hits, 21 plate appearances. He's walked four times but struck out five times. Brody's got him on the ropes now. No balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch from Brecht. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Brody avoids danger in the fifth. Three to nothing, Iowa. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Thank you. 
When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Three to nothing, Iowa out in front of Rutgers in the series finale. Bottom of the fifth, the Hawkeyes looking for a sweep of the Scarlet Knights. Hopefully can get to Donovan Zach here. He's out for another inning of work. He's been pretty electric for the Scarlet Knights out of the bullpen today. After their uh, their starter, Coppola, only lasted two and two-thirds. Off to an outstanding start in the first two innings, but had trouble in the third with a couple of walks. And Iowa, Iowa got to him and chased him from the game. But so far since then, Zach has been pretty solid, the left-hander out of the bullpen for the Scarlet Knights. Michael Seegers will get his first look at the Rutgers reliever. He'll square to bunt, pulled it back, and the pitch was high for ball one. This is where things got started for Iowa in the third. Michael was hit by a pitch. He would get the scoring going for the black and gold. We're in the bottom of the fifth now, Iowa leading 3 nothing. 1-0 delivery is low and in, ball two. These Big Ten opponents have got to be excited to see Michael Seegers graduating at some point. It probably <laughs> feels like they've played against him for the last 10 years. <laughs> He's been around for some time. Seegers, the steady shortstop for Iowa. Two balls and a strike on him. The pitch from Zach, Ooh. grounded foul. Sharply hit to the Iowa dugout. That will... Uh, <laughs> That'll get him on the top rail. Michaels increased his batting average up to 275 now. A few base hits this weekend. Just a matter of time before Michael starts putting it in play, and he's doing that this weekend. Here's a 2 2. High and out, ball three. He really makes the pitcher work for it consistently. Doesn't spread the zone too much, never swings outside. Great command of the strike zone. That's Seegers. Full count. The pitch fouled off over the on-deck circle to the right. Had to offer at that. Probably called a third strike if Michael doesn't swing at it up and in. But a pretty good zone today. Pretty good strike zone today from Mike Fichter behind the plate. We'll go again with a full count pitch. Here it comes from Zach. That's low, ball four. Lead off walk for Michael Seegers. Really professional at bat there by Michael Seegers, able to battle off some tough pitches consistently into the Hawkeye dugout and over the screen and then fight back to get a four pitch to get four balls as well. And now you bring up Cade Moss, who has great control of the bat. If this is a bunt situation, possibly for Iowa, up 3 0 in the fifth. Maybe you let Cade swing it, but we'll see if he decides to bunt. Third baseman Santa Maria now starts to creep forward. Cade shows the bunt, pulled it back. Ooh, high strike. Nothing in one. I think we're going to see a lot of that. One ninth mentality here with Cade Moss. On a day where it's tough to score some runs mm -hmm. with good pitching, I think we're going to try to get Michael Seegers over there to second base anyway we can. Here's the sack bunt. Yeah, early show from Moss. Great Gets bond. the bunt down right to the third baseman. Oh, he juggled it. <laughs> Thought about throwing it to second. His only play then will be to first. And Moss is out. Not sure that they would have been able to get Seegers at second base, even if he fielded that cleanly. Moss does a great job to move Michael to second. Agreed. Invaluable there to have somebody at the bottom of the lineup that can handle the bat as well as Cade Moss does. And puts it down down the third base line and it allows Seegers to get in the scoring position. Top of the order for the Hawks now and Andy Nelson. Andy walked and scored in the third. See if Andy can find some green grass. First pitch to Nelson. Breaking ball dropped low. A lot of movement on that. Do you feel a shift in Andy Nelson's approach offensively since he's been in the leadoff spot? 
I do. It's been a really tricky spot to be for Iowa hitters this year because early on, it was probably a new guy there every series, mm -hmm. and, and nobody really wanted to take control. But Andy has done a really nice job being confident and controlled with with his approach. I think he can do it all. That's what makes him so key there at the top. Worried about Seegers at second base. They throw it there a couple of times. You know, Andy's got the power. He's got the speed, and he's disciplined. Usually you think of a leadoff hitter as somebody that's speedy, that yeah. probably doesn't have a lot of power, but can get on base for the middle of the order. Iowa you know, sets the table with those guys at the bottom, so eventually when you get to spots like this in the middle of the game, Andy Nelson's able to move the runners around. There's a similar issue last year with the Hawkeye. It seemed like the leadoff spot was just a void that they needed to be filled. We put Sam Peterson in there, a little bit of Ben Wilmess. Michael Seegers is just kind of a revolving door all year. It's good to see somebody just come in and put their foot down and make it their spot. Two balls, no strikes to Nelson. He takes in for ball three. Got to be the red light here. Yep. PD on deck. Three zero. -oh. That's across for a strike. Seegers out there at second base with one out. Here's the 3 1. Ooh. Fouled off the catcher's mask. Natilly will take a breather. Healthy cut there. Wind, as Brennan mentioned earlier, was shifting in for a moment. Now it's <laughs> almost going out and a little bit over to right, but I don't think a, a ball would be necessarily kept in by the wind out to left if Andy could pull one. Would not be mad at that at all. Approach may be different, though, with two strikes. Especially with the electric Zach on the mound. Mm -hmm. There's a huge hole through the right side. Second baseman's pinched over holding Seegers. There's a lot of green to the right side. Andy could drive in Seegers. I'll throw it to second base to keep Michael around. Three balls and two strikes. One out in the fifth for Andy Nelson. It's three to nothing Hawks. Pitch to Andy. Mm. Ooh, outside, ball four. Rode the edge of the plate. Ball four for Nelson. And he walks for the second time today to put another runner on for Sammy P. How much more dynamic does this offense feel with Sam Peterson at the heart of it? Just seems like it's an extra layer of this Hawkeye offense that the pitching staff of the opposing teams has to deal with. Yeah, right. You, you think about the, the series against Michigan where Petey was out of the lineup, even the one against Ohio State where Iowa had started to adjust to life without him for a moment. The Michigan series, Iowa's bats were sort of left at home. And just to have him back, you've seen the production the last mm -hmm. two days. What a threat he is. You can't pitch around him, and then when you pitch to him, he makes you pay almost every time, either putting pressure on your defense to have them have to make a play. Runners at first and second, one out for Peterson in the fifth. Three-nothing Iowa. Petey swinging for the fences and fouled it off into the catcher's mitt. Boy, Zach came off the mound. Maybe thinking he got away with one a little bit there. That was a high fastball. Yeah. See if Peterson can drive it if he throws it again. That fastball to letters just looks so enticing, but with the spin rate that Zach has on his fastball, he's able to get enough on it to miss barrels. Mixed things up and went with an off speed that stayed high and out. Had Peterson leaning forward mm -hmm. and towards the plate as well. Iowa threatening in the fifth. Out in front, 3-0. Here's the 1-1. There's a curveball for a strike. 1-2. About 20 miles per hour difference between the fastball and that curveball. It's tough to stay back on. One ball and two strikes on Peterson now. Zach comes set, checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch. Lined into right, but foul. We'll do it again. That's what makes Petey so dangerous right there, able to stay back on that fastball. He's driving it into the Hawkeye bullpen the other way, giving himself an opportunity if he hangs that slider to be able to slam it up the middle to get a base runner in. The 
one, two. Swing and a miss. Foul tip into the glove. And Peterson is out number two. Really nice pitch from Zach on the inner third. Yeah, tough pitch there, 93 miles an hour, right on the black. Pitch Sam Peterson needs to swing at, but tough to get your barrel there on that pitch after the breaking balls that he showed earlier in the count. It's up to Raider Tello with two outs for Iowa in the fifth. Couple runners on for him. Hit a triple his last time up. Drove in two runs. Zach fires. Off the end of the bat in the air, foul to the right side. Dangerous pitch there on the outer half. That's the pitch Raider slammed to the other way for a triple last at bat. No balls and a strike. Zach's pitch on the way home. That's high. 95. Count even at one. Mm. Tello chased the high heater that time out of the zone. A couple of Rutgers pitchers have gotten on him on that this weekend. I don't hate that swing and miss though by Raider. That's his hot zone. Pitches in that zone, he seems to hammer a lot better than pitches down in the zone. So if he's going to chase one way or another, I'd rather see him do it that way. One ball and two strikes on Tello now. Here's the pitch. Hit down the line in left. Get out. And it is fair. Inside the line. Seeger scores. Here comes Andy. Tello Sosa's into second with a two RBI double. Yes. Really, really impressive swing by Raider there. 96 miles an hour on the black. Down out of the zone. He's able to get the barrel there for a 105 mile an hour double to the left field corner. I was right there with you, Brennan. I thought it had a shot to get out, and then it was very close to the line. Thankfully, it stayed fair. We'll take it, John. 5-0 Iowa in the fifth. Again with two outs and two strikes. Two big-time swings for Raider to get these drive these five runs, and he's having himself a day. Here comes Davis Cobb. Davis is 0 for 2 today with a couple of strikeouts. You know, he's just a moment away from picking things up. First pitch to Davis. Breaking ball stayed high at the letters, ball one. One out of cop. Low and in. Ball two. Rutgers with a right hander just throwing, not quite on the mound yet in the bullpen. <clears throat> Hitters count for Davis. Two balls, no strikes with two outs. Way high, ball three. It broke Natilly out of his stance. Three zero. Outside corner, strike one. I think he's going to come back with that fastball here. I'd love to see Davis get his best swing off and try to drive something. Give the Hawks some more insurance. A lot of room on that right side, too, mm -hmm. for Davis, which he has gone to a few times in this series. Here comes the 3-1. Fouled off. Chased it. Yeah, that was high, but that, that fastball really rides up there mm -hmm. at the end. It's a full count on Cop now. We've said it a couple times about Davis this weekend. He's been in these situations where he's really needed a hit. This feels like one of those moments for Davis. Mm -hmm. It's been a frustrating day for him so far. Three balls, two strikes with two outs. Tello at second base. 5 nothing Iowa in the fifth. Here's the pitch to Davis. Mm. Took it right down the middle for a called third strike. And that'll do it for Iowa in the fifth. Two runs come across on the double from Raider Tello. It's 5-0 Iowa. We're back for the sixth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy. It's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. At the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Top of the sixth in Iowa City, 5 nothing. Iowa leading Rutgers in the series finale. 9-1-2 due up for the Scarlet Knights. Natalia will lead it off for RU. 64 pitches for Brody Brecht. He's allowed one hit, striking out six along the way. Walked a couple batters in the last inning, but other than that, this is the Brody Brecht that that we're expecting to see this season. Had a little bit of a discussion here with the second base umpire and head coach Steve Owens. I wonder what that could be about. Maybe some frustration boiling over from a long weekend for the Rutgers and Scarlet Knights. All right, Natili Love and Kuroda Grauer do up in the sixth. Brody fires a strike in the zone. Brody had to sit for just a little bit in the dugout. 0-1 is tapped foul to the on-deck circle to the left. Nothing in two. He'll take the run support, though. That's right. Hmm. Yeah, if it's a good trade-off, that, that's fine, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Way out in front of Natilly. No balls, two strikes to start the sixth. Brody's pitch. Great pitch. Called third strike. Froze him with the slider that dropped right in there. One down. Second baseman. Seven strikeouts for Brecht. Top of the order for Cameron Love. He's 0 for 2 today. He struck out once. Rutgers has got some really, really professional hitters. A lot of guys that will play at the next level, and it looks like they just have never seen pitches at this level, this caliber so far today. They've been pretty much baffled throughout the entire afternoon. This is the best that Brody's sliders looked all year. Absolutely. There was a period of time where he just wasn't throwing it as often. Now it looks like he's gotten back to the confident slider. There's the splitter for a strike. One and one on Love, the senior second baseman. That's from the right side. The one one from Brecht. Inside, just off the plate, two and one. Out of the windup, here comes the 2-1. Popped up, shallow right center. Andy Nelson in right will make the play after shielding his eyes from the sun, two down. The old fight the sun with your sunglasses on your hat right there, John. <laughs> that always baffles me. I guess sometimes there's a glare, but you've got some help out there just above your uh, hat there, Andy. <laughs> two down for Kuroda Grauer. This is when you like to see him. Two outs and the base is empty. Slider out for ball one. Brecht has done a nice job against him. Kuroda Grauer is 0 for 2 today with a couple of strikeouts. You can imagine Kuroda Grauer sitting slider here, but he may not be able to do anything with it, even planning on that pitch coming down. First time that he sees the splitter today, and it drops in for a strike one and one. Brody brings home the 1-1. One, one. 
Swing and a miss. One and two. There's that slider again. You see Crota Grauer using his hand motion to try to see that pitch up. He's trying to force it back in the strike zone, but can't seem to lay off of it. I think Brody's thrown him eight sliders, and uh, maybe six of them have been out of the zone, but they've all been strikes. One, two, he <laughs> threw it again, and he struck him out again for the third time today. Brody's got his number. What an outing by Brody Brecht. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Iowa out in front, 5 nothing. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Brown Deer Golf Club offers a pure golf experience. Manicured bent grass fairways with tees and greens carved into gracefully rolling landscape. Challenging, yet extremely playable. Improve your game with PGA instruction and our full service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. Tickets are on sale now for the High Beat IndyCar Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th, see Luke Combs and Eric Church. And Sunday, July 14th, see Post Malone and Kelsey Ballerini live in concert. One ticket per day gets you into a race and two concerts. Tickets on sale now at HighBeatIndyCarWeekend.com. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Hawkeye fans are enjoying this game so far. Bottom of the sixth, the Iowa leading Rutgers five to nothing. And the Scarlet Knights will bring in a new pitcher for this inning. They'll go back to Ben Gorski, the right-handed senior from Chatham, New Jersey. Gorski uh, pitched on Friday night uh, against the Hawkeyes. And Gorski went two-thirds of an inning, gave up one hit. He did strike out a Hawkeye batter. What can we expect to see from Gorski, Brennan? We've got a, another right-handed thrower here, this time with a ride fastball similar to what we just saw with Zach, but from the right side. It's going to be 90 to 93, so a little bit less velocity, but there's still going to be that swing and miss at the top of the strike zone. Looks like he's going to favor that slider to right-handed hitters and then use a put-out pitch as a curveball to those left-handed hitters trying to bury it below the zone. The biggest thing with him is he's thrown a lot throughout the year. He's sprayed it a lot and had a bunch of walks, about 10 in conference weekends so far already. So we're going to see if the Hawkeyes can hold him to the strike zone and keep him accountable with throwing pitches out of the plate. He's hit six batters in uh, just in 20 and two-thirds innings, and he's had five wild pitches too. Reese Moore, we'll see him for the first time. Reese is 0 for 2 today. Gorski, the right-hander, deals. Off speed on the outer edge, that's strike one. Bottom of the sixth, Iowa leading 5 nothing. Interesting stat. Two hits for the Hawks, one for Rutgers. 0-1, same pitch, same spot, same result. Nothing in two. It's that big curveball there. It's a tough pitch to pick up with that high arm slot. It's a 12-6, starting at Reese's letters and then dropping right to the knees. The 0-2, hit in the air to shallow left. Volpe running forward. And he'll make the catch on the run for the first out of the inning. Triple that up there. Tri triple that curveball up there, rather, to Reese. He was just not able to get enough bat on it and lost it up to left field. That's tough for Reese because it's not a it's not really a backdoor curveball uh -huh. because it doesn't have the horizontal break. It's just yep. up over the hill, right? Correct, yep. Here's Kyle Huxdorf, 0 for 2 as well today. The middle of the order. Spinning just a bit. Look Ooh. out. Sharp line drive foul. Good thing there's that protective netting over to the right. It's the firmest pitch we've seen Gorski throw all weekend. He was 90 to 92. Obviously a chillier day on Friday, but 94 miles an hour there at Kyle's letters. 0-1 to Kyle. Outer edge, strike two. Remember Friday, he works quick. He gets in there and he's coming at the hitters as fast as he can. Yeah, just takes a little sidestep out of the out of the windup mm -hmm. a bit. 0-2, chopped to the right side. Second baseman Love is over. Kyle sprinting down the line, and the throw is in time to get Huxdorf at first base. That shift created a tough play there for Love, ranging over to his left, able to glove it cleanly and then make a throw on the run to retire Kyle by two or three steps. 
Iowa going down quickly in the sixth. Gable Mitchell will look to get it started with two outs. Gable's hitless today. First pitch to him. Good take. That's low. Breaking ball that looked appealing. Mitchell going from the left side where he prefers to bat, but he's a switch hitter. Gorski kicks and fires up and in for another ball. The bottom of this Hawkeye line has been tough to throw strikes to all weekend. You look at guys like Mitchell, Seegers, and Moss. Disciplined. They hold a tight zone like Gable does there. Ball three. And when they do get their best swing off, it is often productive. Agreed. Three balls and no strikes. Two outs, the pitch to Mitchell. That's a cross just below the letters, three and one. <clears throat> three, one. Blooped foul to the left side. Gorski's worked back to make the count full. Good healthy hack there by Gable. Orski toes the rubber, set with the full count pitch to Mitchell. Took it right down the middle for the called third strike. That'll do it for the six. We'll bring you the seventh right after this. Iowa five, Rutgers nothing. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com slash TV to learn more. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and Type R car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. As a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Brody Brecht out for the seventh, pitching a gem for the black and gold today. It's 5-0. Iowa, Brecht has allowed just one hit in six innings. He struck out eight. Doing a nice job against this Rutgers lineup. He'll see the heart of the order, 3-4-5. Doucette, Santa Maria, and Cohen coming to the plate. Cohen, who's in the hole right now, he has Rutgers' lone hit today. 5 nothing. feels like I was in pretty firm control. Keep putting up those zeros. Doucette's a great hitter for the Scarlet Knights. Stands in from the left side. Brody winds and fires. That's in the dirt for ball one. One zero is slapped down the left field line. That will get foul into the Rutgers bullpen. Good to see Brody holding his velocity as well with some question marks about injuries and health throughout the week. That fastball here in the seventh inning. Pitch number 75 at 96 miles an hour. Then he throws the splitter at one and two now. He's got Doucette on the ropes, the one, two. Swing and a miss. Got him fishing. Hook, line, and sinker. One down. What's your plan if you're a Rutgers hitter going up there right now? I don't know. Brody's had a ton of first pitch strikes. So if, if you're into a take mentality, yeah. you're, you're going to be down early. You got to get your swing off, I think. He's on with every single pitch, so you don't know what's coming. There's a slider, called a strike to start the at-bat for Santa Maria. Just been so great to see Brody dominate right now. It's 
awesome to see for Brecht. 0-1 pitch on its way home. Swing and a miss. That thing's filthy. 89 miles an hour with 15 inches of horizontal break across the zone. Hunting for his 10th strikeout of the game. Brody out of the windup. Here comes the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Got him again. Have to throw it down to first nice base to complete drive. the transaction. Two down. Marketing crew is going to need to <laughs> roll some more T-shirts. Ten strikeouts for Brecht. And now he'll see Cohen. First pitch, pitch, check swing. He went around, didn't he? You bet. They send it down to third. Pretty clear. 98 miles an hour there below the zone. Really good pitch. No balls, one strike. Yep. Check swing again. Ooh, home plate umpire a call at this time. Nothing in two. Brody's fired up. He's got that adrenaline here in the seventh. 92 mile an hour slider. Back to what he was in the first inning. Looking to strike out the side. No balls, two strikes with two outs. The pitch from Brody. Ooh. Low and out. Wanted it. 91 miles an hour there on the splitter. Don't mind that one bit. Uh -uh. He's been so close to the strike zone all day. This is pitch 86 for Brody in the seventh. The one two. High and out. Iowa leading 5 0 in the seventh. Behind the gem from Brody Brecht. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Spun him into the turf. Brecht with 11 strikeouts, and the Hawkeye fans rise to their feet. What a performance by Brody Brecht. He's throwing a one hitter, and it's time to stretch in Iowa City. Hey, Hawkeye fans, it is time for the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch. You know what to do get up, stretch those legs, and go enjoy the best seventh inning stretch tradition of all Blue Bunny ice cream. Blue Bunny is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeyes and the seventh inning stretch. We'll bring you the bottom of the seventh right after this. Iowa leading Rutgers five to nothing. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. 5-0 Iowa in the bottom of the seventh. Brecht just striking out the side for the second time this afternoon. Has kept that momentum in the Iowa dugout. Michael Seegers will lead things off for the black and gold in the bottom of the seventh. Now the home plate umpire talking to the Rutgers coaching staff about the delivery from Gorski. Just a pretty blurry line between whether he's in the windup or the stretch, right? I think he's got to declare whether he's in the windup or the stretch. He's kind of mixing in between the two of them, and it's... Oh, he's doing it again. Home plate umpire talking with <laughs> Rutgers coach 
Mike Fichter saying he's got to decide if he wants to go from the stretch or the windup. It's a hybrid delivery, and he's switching it up too fast is what he said. <laughs> All right. 0-1 to Seegers. Outside Looked for a pretty ball. Pretty similar to me there. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm in agreement. <laughs> Looks like he comes set and then he's quick with that back, that back step, yeah, that well, drop he, step. He's got his left hip yeah. facing home plate. But sometimes he just comes and delivers. Yeah, it's really similar to what Marcus Morgan's been doing this year, where sure. it looks like he's in the stretch. He takes that side step backwards as he's facing yeah. third base. Two balls and a strike to Seegers to lead off Iowa's seventh inning. The pitch hit down the line in right, but that's foul. Out of play. Two and two now. <clears throat> Michael doesn't have an at-bat today. He's got two plate appearances, but he was hit by a pitch and he walked. When Michael has gotten on today, he has scored. It's 5-0 Iowa in the seventh. Here's a pop fly right side. Second baseman Love goes back into shallow right. He'll make the over-the-shoulder catch for the first out of the inning. Catcher, Cade Moss. And Cade Moss will head to the box now for Iowa. You think we see Brody in the eighth? Looks pretty, pretty calm in the Hawkeye bullpen right now. It's safe to say it's a good assumption that Brody Bryce can come out for the eighth. Pitch count in the mid 80s, so yeah. that that's not a an issue at this at this point. One out for Moss. Ooh, Ooh. up and in. Bends backwards to avoid being hit by it. A pitch in there at 93 miles an hour. Just up and out of the strikes, up and in on Cade Moss, but up out of the strike zone. There's a strike on the inside corner, one and one. <clears throat> Moss without an at bat today as well. Ooh. Golfs it foul, hits off the Jacobson building to the right. One and two. Moss walked in the third, laid down a Perfect sack bunt in the fifth. Down on the count now, though, one and two. Blooped foul, right side. First baseman Doucette giving it a look, but it'll drop near the cages. Another foul ball. Moss battling hard with two strikes. Looks like we've got graduate pitcher Joey DeCero, left-handed pitcher, uh, up in the bullpen for the Rutgers. Scarlet Knights right now getting loose. See if Iowa can escort Gorski out of the game. Pitch in on the fists in hands of Cade Moss. That's foul. One, two. Breaking ball dropped into the zone. Moss is down on strikes, two gone in the Iowa seventh. Tough pitch there, big 12-6 breaker after three heaters. Just clipped the top of the zone against Cade Moss. This has been a strange game for a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pitchers have been outstanding. A combined 24 strikeouts between the two teams. And then offensively, just three hits. Two for Iowa, one for Rutgers. Here's Andy Nelson. Good cut. Comes up empty, strike one. If you're new tuning into college baseball, generally Sundays is a high-scoring game. A little bit more scarce. Bullpens, some guys rolling back out for the second or third time throughout the weekend, so there's just a lot more offense to be had. But today has been the complete opposite of that. One ball and one strike on Andy. Yeah, this feels a lot more like a Friday type of game. Mm -hmm. Good to see Iowa out in front right now. The 1-1 one -one is in on the hands, ball two. High and out for ball three. Nelson holding a strong zone.
Advantage count here. Look for Andy to get his best swing off on a fastball in the zone. 3-1. Ooh. Fouled back off the end of the bat. Took a little bit off that 88 miles an hour just to throw a strike, and he got lucky. Andy with a healthy hack, fouled it straight back. Full count, Andy trying to keep the seventh inning going for Iowa. The pitch from Gorski. Right down the middle and a called third strike. The lower third of the zone, I suppose. And the Hawks go down looking back to back to end the seventh. Five nothing Iowa. We'll take you to the eighth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oakdale is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oakdale.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get a plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Iowa leading Rutgers 5 to nothing in the top of the eighth. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. We do see Brody Brecht on the mound for the eighth. Six, seven, and eight, DeRocher, Volpe, and Chufreda do up. Hmm. Slider inside. That was a headhunter. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. Good pitch there. Yeah, just off the plate, too high out of the zone. First sort of action for... Hawkeye bullpen, we've got Jack Young throwing in the bullpen. Hoodie's still on, just tossing off the mound lightly. Not DeRocher to chase a fastball outer third, two and one. Out of the windup, Brecht is ready, here it comes. In the dirt, ball three. DeRocher drew a walk back in the third inning. 3-1. Inside, ball four. So a leadoff walk. And we'll see how long they uh, let Brody roll here in the, in the eighth. A little double barrel action now with Ben Dete and Jack Young throwing, both tossing a little bit heavier, getting loose ready here. Brecht is at 92 pitches. From the stretch to Volpe, outside. <laughs> the Hawkeye faithfuls got Brody's back, thinks the strike zone's, he's getting shrunk a little bit. Short lead at first base, Brody keeps an eye on him. Here comes the 1-0, that caught the corner, 1-1. One and one. Middle infield pinched. Seegers and Mitchell close to the bag at second. The 1-1. Good pitch there. Ground ball to third. Tello picks it up. He'll throw it to first across the diamond. Cop makes the catch for the first out of the inning. DeRocher gets to second. And that's the right call there by Raider Tello. Softly hit ground ball right to him. Took him in at two or three steps. And it would have been a forcing it a little bit if he threw it across the infield. One of those 
slow choppers, right? You can't bring the yeah. ball. You can't. There's nothing that charging it hard would do, really. Yeah. Runner in scoring position for Chufreda. He's first pitch swinging and knocks it foul to the right. Chufreda grabs a bat like he's trying to wring out a big towel, wet <laughs> towel. <laughs> Looks like, like he's mad at it. Yeah, his swing is somewhat stiff, too. The 0-1, wave that and miss, nothing in two. The splitter there, that's the third splitter he's thrown to Chufreda. Tough pitch for him to lay off of or get any piece of barrel on it. No balls and two strikes. Brody comes set, checks the runner at second. Kicks and fires in the dirt. Got by Cade Moss. He can't locate it. The runner will get to third. That one got through the five hole on Cade. Really the first defensive miscue we've had by defense. Just one pass ball, it looks like. So the runner at third with less than two outs. The one-two. Fouled off a Cade. That one caught him in the shin protector. He's still hopping around. Brody's up over his career high in innings pitched. Surpassing the seven inning mark. As he's recorded an out now in the eighth. Career high strikeouts for Brody is 13. He has 11 right now. Looking for number 12. He's got Chufreda down in the count one and two. Brody comes set. The pitch. Grounded foul. Chufreda starting to figure out that splitter a little bit in the bottom of the zone. That one a little bit higher and enough, enough distance for Pete to get his barrel on it. Just fouled it off. Spoiled it. Chufreda's battling harder than we've seen any Rutgers batter go today. Forcing a lot of pitches from Brecht. That one missed the zone low, two and two. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Runner at third with one out. Brody's pitch is hit foul down the third base side. Using a slower breaking ball there. He's throwing the whole kitchen sink at Chufreda here to try to get him out. Another 2-2 two -two from Brecht. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Got him. Two down. Really, really good splitter there. Chufredo was able to hang with a couple of them, but that one just too low off the plate and down. Couldn't get enough barrel on it. Swung over the top of it into Cade Moss's glove. Bottom of the order for Natilli with two outs. Check swing. Did he go? He Got did. Him. Strike one. Really good start there after going deep in the count. You're afraid of him come back and be able to deliver strike one, get ahead of the batter, Natilli. Correct from the windup, the 0-1. Off the plate outside. A little distaste from the Hawkeye faithful there, but I think that ball's off. Yeah, just, just off. away. Yeah. Count even at one. Five nothing Iowa in the eighth. Here's the pitch. Really Line good foul. Fish there. Yeah, what'd you like about that, Brennan? Location yeah. or, or choice? I think both. Choice. Tripling up on that slider, keeping Natilly off balance. He's had trouble laying off that pitch and then also just getting it out of the zone so he can't do anything with it. Iowa fans getting behind Brecht as he's looking to match his career high in strikeouts. He's at 12. One ball, two strikes. The pitch to Natilly. Just high. Ball two. Tough pitch to lay off of there. Splitter coming back in the zone, just not bringing it down enough to get a strike. The two Hawkeye balls. Wants to strike out. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit down the line and right. Nelson sprinting over. Andy's still running, but it's fouling out of play. We'll have to do it again. <laughs> 
Fans once again getting up behind Brecht as he climbs on the rubber. Certainly pleased with Brecht's performance today. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, the pitch outside. Ball three. Five nothing Iowa in the eighth. Runner at third with two outs. With that pitch count climbing into the low 100, do you think that there's a chance that this could be his last batter, especially being the nine hole? Brody has shaken off a few signs, and that draws pitching coach Sean McGrath out of the dugout to go talk with Brody. Mound visit taking place. Quick one. That was about as fast yeah. as we've seen this year. McGrath usually likes to take his time and stroll on up there, but that time he sprinted on out there and sprinted back. Keep Brody in his rhythm. You think for Brody it's probably just one more pitch, right? I think so. I'd say so as well. It's a big one. Full count from Bragg. Here it comes. Chopper, left side, Tello charging hard. Raider scoops it up, throw to first, wide oh. of the bag. The run will come down and score. It was going to be a bang-bang play anyway at first base. Rutgers is on the scoreboard. It's 5-1 to one now in the eighth, and their inning stays alive. You'd think that'd be a hit. That's a really tough play there for Raider Tello. Softly hit, speedy runner there. Second baseman, Cameron Love. Go to the top of the order now for the Scarlet Knights. You'd think that'd be it for Brody. We'll see. He wants it, though. He's on the mound. Uh, he's and mad. The last person that Brody wants to see is Coach Heller, <laughs> but Coach Heller is out of the dugout making his way to the mound. Iowa making a pitching change in the eighth, the first one of the game, an absolute gem from Brody Brecht. And how about this ovation from the crowd? Brody Brecht walks off to a standing ovation at Banks. Iowa leads it 5-1 to one in the eighth. We'll take a pitching change break back in just a moment. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Let's be honest. We all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's authentic brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the authentic brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at authentic-brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for authentic brand. Tickets are on sale now for the high V Indy Car Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th, see Luke Combs. Church. And Sunday, July 14th, see Post Malone and Kelsey Ballerini live in concert. One ticket per day gets you into a race and two concerts. Tickets on sale now at HighBeeIndyCarWeekend.com. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chance to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. All right, the new pitcher into the game for the Hawkeyes is left-handed redshirt senior from Clive. This is Ben Dete. So the Hawkeyes go from Brecht to the strong... Uh, flame-throwing right-hander to Ben Dete, a little bit more of a, a junk pitcher, change-up heavy. Dete, the lefty, making his 12th appearance with a 2.13 ERA. He struck out 15 batters. He's walked four. Opponents hit 125 against Ben. Top of the order, strike one from Dete as Love watched it go by. A little unorthodox here for a left-handed bullpen arm to be so change-up heavy, but he's got what Sean McGrath refers to as a Bugs Bunny changeup. It kind of just sits up there and dances a little bit. It's a split finger and then dies below the barrel of the, of the Rutgers hitters. Oh, one has popped up right side. This could be playable. Davis Cop is over in foul territory. Davis still trying to track it down. Can't make the play. 
So Tay doubling up with that changeup there. Back-to-back -back pitches here to start off um, this at bat with Cameron Love. Two strikes on Love. It's five to one Iowa in the eighth. Runner at first base. Tate looks in for the sign from Moss. He's got it. The 0-2. Off the plate, outside for a ball. Interesting shift here with Cameron Love. First time we've seen that today. Got to think with a little bit of a slower velocity that there's a chance he turns this pitch around and shift all three left um, Iowa infielders to the left side of the infield. He's a 336 batter. This is in got the him. dirt, got by Moss. Oh. Thought it might have hit him in the foot, but bounced in front and then up over Cade's shoulder. And the runner will advance to second with two outs. Still some tense times here in Iowa City. It's a four-run lead for the Hawks in the eighth. Counts two and two on Love. Detay checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch. In the dirt again, ball three. A little bit of added pressure here with the full count with Kuroda Grauer on deck. Yes, Haven't yes. seen much of him, his offensive prowess so far this weekend, but definitely know it's capable and it's in there somewhere. That makes this pitch even bigger as Detay comes set. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the delivery. Swing Got and him. a miss. Got him to chase a high heater. Big time pitch there by Ben Detay. 88 miles an hour at the top of the zone. Nothing going for Cameron Love as the Hawkeyes go into the bottom of the, excuse me, the top of the ninth. Five to one, Iowa. The Hawks will come up with Peterson, Tello, and Kopp. Back in just a moment, this is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Bottom of the eighth in Iowa City, five to one. The Hawkeyes inching closer to a sweep of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights this weekend. New pitcher into the game for Rutgers is a fifth-year left-hander from Flemington, New Jersey. Spent some time in Old Dominion, and the Scarlet Knights will bring in Joey DiChiaro. He's at the top of their uh, pitching staff out of the bullpen. 2.51 ERA in 14 appearances. He has five saves, uh, so he's he's their back end guy that does a really nice job for him. 20 strikeouts. He has walked 15 batters, and opponents are hitting a measly 167 against him. So the only issues that he could have is maybe some control problems. Yeah, absolutely. You'd like to think with Rutgers having him in their back pocket in the third game, they've been waiting for a lead to put him in, but. Obviously, at this point in the weekend, you got to use your best bullets when you got them, and they're going to throw out Joey here to try to keep the Iowa offense at bay and keep it a four-run lead going into the bottom of the ninth, top of the ninth, excuse me. Yeah, what do you see from uh, Di Chiero? Hey, he's got that good fastball that all these Rutgers bullpen arms have shown so far. It's going to be 92 to 94 miles an hour with a hard, firm slider. That's going to force these lefties to try to stay on it. He's going to... It looks like he's going to face three righties here to start the day, though, so we'll have to see what Petey can do with the fastball and the slider. Peterson, Tello, and Cobb are due up. Could use a couple of runs here, Brennan. What do you think? No doubt. Five to one in the eighth, but with Rutgers' offense the way it is, you just never really feel safe. First pitch to Petey. Offered at it. Couldn't lay off. It's that slider. Good pitch, and that's strike one. Seen three very different pitchers for Rutgers today. Low and out. That skipped in the opposite batter's box. I guess we've seen four different 
pitchers for the Scarlet Knights. I forgot about Zach there who came <laughs> in right away. I can forget about him. He was really solid for the Scarlet Knights out of the bullpen. One ball and one strike to Peterson. Here's the pitch. Ah, foul tip over to the right. Fastball well down off the below the zone, but Peterson not able to hold back and just got a piece of it. Count is one and two. Chiaro comes set, the left-hander out of the stretch. Pause in the pitch. Ooh. Fastball high. Two and two. Petey is 0 for 3 today, reached on an error in the third. Run scored in an RBI for Peterson today. i rather not a uh, error, he reached on a fielder's choice. Work to, work to full count now. Yeah, interesting scoring note. Um, the Hawkeyes offensive scorer, the score book, scorekeeper rather, went back in and changed that Raider Tello play to an air, so it looks like that run will be unearned for Brody Brecht. Well, hometown scoring, Brennan. 3-2. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Threw it by Peterson. Up and in, that's a that's a tough pitch, uh, kind of handcuffed, right? Yeah, it's also tough when he's sprinted. The two, three pitches before were so uncompetitive, and then he comes back in with a 91-mile-an-hour heater in on your hands. It's just tough to get around on that pitch. It really has to make things very difficult when you have somebody who is all around and not necessarily consistently in the zone. Absolutely. Tricky to stay locked in. Here's Raider Tello. A couple of extra base hits for Iowa's third baseman today. Downstairs, ball one. There's just a sense of confidence. You and I have watched Raider have enough at-bats to know when you just see him step in the box the way he just commands the pitcher's presence as well as just gets ready to hit. You can just tell he's feeling good right now. Two balls and no strikes. Hasn't seen anything to hit now. Yeah, I think you're right. Just the way he manipulates the bat mm -hmm. in the box. It's like a sense of rhythm that he's got when he's feeling good and he's hot. Right. Hitters count for him now. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch to Tello. Ooh. High pop-up. Shallow center. DeRocher coming forward. It's Kuroda Grauer who dropped it. He dropped it. The shortstop tried to make the hero play, was backpedaling, and he dropped it. And Tello hustles to second. At the Raider center fielder's bigger. ball, Brennan? Yeah, I would say center fielder's ball is up in the air for a long time. But also really good credit to Raider Tello as he hustled out of the box. As soon as he saw that ball going up, he threw the bat down and took a hard turn around first base, was able to get to second base on the pop-up. Good to see there. I think Raider felt that it might have been tricky uh, getting up there in the wind and with as high as he hit it. So he was hustling all the way around. That speed showing off for Raider Tello once again. His wheels. Here's Davis Cop. He swings at the first pitch, lines it to left, right to the left fielder. 108 there. I think that's about exemplary of Davis Cop's weekend. 108 miles an hour right on the screws, all over that changeup, and the left fielder didn't even have to take a step to catch that one. <laughs> You feel for him. It's been a it's been a tough day for Davis. Just getting a read on some of these Rutgers pitchers. Regroup and get ready for the midweek. Davis needs you the rest of the way here. Two outs for Reese Moore. Iowa's DH today. Five to one Hawks in the eighth. Tello's a big insurance run at second base. Lefty on lefty matchup. First pitch is a strike on the outer edge. Another tough matchup here for Moore. Really really hard left-handed pitcher. That's Kind of throw the whole kitchen sink at him there. We saw a change up to Reese Moore. Yeah, and and Reese has the capability to send it the other way. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he can shove one off that way. A one is fouled to the screen, left side, nothing in two. That swing to me right there is encouraging, just seeing him be able to get his best swing off on a fastball, enter third, and almost get the barrel there, just miss it and foul it back. In a hole, nothing in two. DiChiaro is ready. Tello at second base. Two outs, the pitch. That's high. When he misses the zone, Brennan, 
He misses <laughs> by a large margin. Hasn't really nibbled at the corners. Non-competitive for yeah. sure. Counts one and two. Pitch to Moore. Popped up. Third base side. That'll find the seats. We'll do it again. Credits to DiCaro, though. Missing with that slider high and away. Really non-competitive. And then him getting back up there, gripping it, and ripping it in the strike zone for another pitch is pretty impressive. Speaks to some mental strength, mental skills that he's got going on. One ball and two strikes. The delivery to Moore on its way home. Check swing. Did he go? Ooh, they said that he did. No runs, no hits. Moore strikes out to end the eighth. Five to one. Hawkeyes will bring you the ninth right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oak Knoll is conveniently located near the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hockey Arena, and downtown Iowa City. Oak Knoll is a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Visit oaknoll.com to learn more. All right, top of the ninth, last chance for Rutgers. It's 5-1 to one, Iowa. Ben Dete is given the task of setting the Scarlet Knights down and closing this thing out. Tough part of the order, though, for Rutgers. Corota, Grauer, Doucette, and Santa Maria. A lot of power, a lot of pop here. First pitch from Dete is fouled out of play to the right side. One of the toughest things for this Hawkeye bullpen is the sense of confidence the Rutgers or any other opposing offense gets whenever they get to get Brody Brecht off the mound. It just feels like a breath of fresh air facing anybody else. Oh, one one sharply lined out of play down the line and right. Yeah, I think you make a good point. That's why Brody's start was so key today to get into the eighth inning. 0-2 to Corota Grauer. Outside, good spot there from Dete. Brody's final line, seven and two-thirds, career high. Gave up one hit and had 12 strikeouts. One-two is nudged foul, left side. 110 total pitches for Brody. 72 of them for strikes. Nicely done. Trying to get his first win of the season. The one-two from Dete, grounded to Seegers at short. Michael's going to have to hurry. Ooh, it's off the heel of his glove. Never brought it in. And the E6 gives Rutgers a little life in the ninth. Really uncharacteristic of their Michael Seegers, one of the most steady shortstop defenders in not only the Big Ten, but the country. And a miscue there gives Rutgers a chance to get a leadoff runner on. Ty Doucette comes up. Powerful left-handed hitter. Lefty on lefty matchup. Ground ball to third. Tello picks it up, throws to second for one. On to first. Double play. How about that? Five, four, three. Twin killing. Big time pickup by Raider Tello there. Shifting over to his left and being able to pick up that ground ball and picking up his teammate. Fellow left side of the infield defenseman as well as Seegers helping them out, turning that double play. Two down, and Rutgers is down to their final out. Here's Santa Maria. 
0 for 3 today. Detay's first pitch. He went around. Strike one. You can feel the wind coming out of the Rutgers sails there with that only runner on in this ninth inning. Getting out with that turn double play. Mm -hmm. Oh, one from Detay. Good pitch. Strike two on the inside corner. Rutgers down to their final strike. Iowa fans rise to their feet. Detay gets on the rubber. No balls. Two strikes with two outs. Here it comes. Rounded foul. We'll do it again. Mm, good pitch from Detay. The Hawkeye fans on their feet supporting Ben Detay as he comes set with the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Get out the brooms. How sweep it is. Iowa wins all three against Rutgers and knocks off the Scarlet Knights. 5-1 to one from Banks today. How about that, Brennan? Big time pitching performance by Brody Brecht and then coming in after him, Ben Detay. Anytime you get your starter into the seventh inning and even extend it past that, the Hawkeyes will take it. Big time sweep for the Hawks. That's more like it for those in the black and gold. Iowa gets to 22 and 15 overall. Rutgers drops to 23 and 16. Iowa wins it today 5-1. to one. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Today's game was brought to you in part by Brown Deer Golf Club in Coralville, featuring Bunkers Bar and Grill. Enjoy a great Bunkers menu with burgers, chicken, salads, and wraps, and Gimme's Pizza and Wings, a new pop-up menu at Bunkers that's all about savory pizzas and mouth-watering wings. To-go orders are welcome, as are you and your family at Brown Deer Golf in Coralville. Well, the sun shines a little brighter. The music sounds a little bit better. <laughs> When the Hawkeyes sweep a Big Ten series like they did over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights this weekend, Brennan, heck of a win for the Hawks today. No doubt. And then getting to look at the standings for the week, seeing the 9-6 and six up there instead of a 6-6, six and six, a 500 record, I think that Rick Heller and his coaching staff, that's all you could ask for coming into this weekend. It was all about the starting pitching from Friday to Sunday. Brody Brecht earns the win today, 7 and 2 thirds, one hit allowed, one run. It was unearned. Three walks, 12 strikeouts. Brody faced 27 batters through 110 pitches. Ten balls were put in play uh, off of Brody today for outs. Uh, four flyouts, six groundouts. Brecht was dominant. Ben Detay came in and slammed the door. But uh, how about that uh, performance from Brody? No doubt. And the biggest key was able to keeping that pitch count down, keeping it efficient. Only three free passes today for Brody Brecht, which is one of the best outings we've seen all year, just on the fact of the free passes, but even further into that, one hit, obviously one run, not earned. Everything about this outing was masterful. I think he'll take that every time. Yeah, we've said it before uh, that, that we know it's in there for Brody, that dominant performance just like that. It's in there, and we finally got to see it today, and uh, super happy for Brecht uh, to have a performance like he did today. What stood out to you offensively this afternoon, Brennan? Yeah, I think grinding it out and doing our one ninth. Obviously, using the skill sets and the protocols that Marty and Rick Heller have put into place consistently throughout the entire year, even ranging back into August, 
doing that one ninth and focusing solely on doing your job and not trying to do too much. There was a lot of guys out there that were trying to just grind away at that pitcher, getting Kapala out in the first in, in the excuse me in the second inning rather was really huge. And then obviously the free passes that we were able to draw up and down the lineup. One from Michael Seegers and one from Cade Moss to get it going, and then two big swings by Raider Tella. Everyone just doing their one ninth, passing the baton until we could get that big offensive swing. Brennan, take us in the clubhouse right now. What's the what what's going on in there with the guys? What's the celebration like? I'll tell you, it's really good vibes for sure, and there's a <laughs> lot of a lot of sighs of relief because there's a lot of question marks and a lot of guys wondering how the rest of the season is going to go. But this answered a lot of questions this weekend. This was not just a flash in the pan but more of just a sign of consistency and what's to come for the hawkeyes which is super cool to see really positive step for the hawks to get to nine and six now in conference play marty sutherland's on his way up to the booth brennan really want to thank you for everything this weekend really nice job the fans loved having a legendary hawk like you in the box with us this week good luck to everything moving forward all I really right appreciate you having me up here thank you iowa sweeps rutgers winning five to one today we're back with more post-game coverage right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa sweeps Rutgers this weekend, winning the finale 5-1 to one behind the gem from Brody Brecht on the mound. We're joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, great win for the Hawks today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, yeah, what can you say about Brody? That was, that was, that was impressive against a good lineup. That, that team's a good lineup. And, and you know, really across the, the whole weekend to hold them to, say, eight runs or whatever it was um, just says a lot about the pitching staff and obviously the starts you get out of the bookend weekend of of Cade and, and Brody. I mean, that was that was fantastic. And then Ben comes in, does a great job. And, um, you know, we didn't we weren't great offensively, but but Raider picked us up in two spots. We had guys on. We didn't have a lot of opportunities. Credit to their to their guys. Um, but Raider at the two big hits that, that, that give you four two out runs, two extra base hits and uh, really saved us. So really, really good baseball game and knew you're going to get a good effort from Rutgers and just really proud of the guys. Yeah, if you, if you break down the whole series, Coach, Coach, just, just your thoughts on what it took to get a sweep against a great team like Rutgers. Well, starts, right? I mean, that's that's really what it is. You hate to keep beating the dead horse, but we just needed some better length out of our starters. And and Friday and, and Sunday, we have we get Brody gets us into the eighth, and Cade gets us into the seventh uh, on on Friday, and that's what you need when you get, you know our bullpen. You know, we had our struggles earlier. But, but we're in a really good place there. Some roles have kind of been chiseled out and some guys have been successful, but you can't cover 18 outs in a game. You know, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're the, a big league bullpen or a college bullpen or a high school bullpen. If you don't get linked out of your starters, you're really going to be up against it. And that's, you know, what we've been doing quite a bit, asking our relievers to come in in the, in the fourth or fifth inning and now cover the rest of the game. So this, that length and what it does to, um, to set up uh, putting those guys in better spots to be successful in the pen is a huge deal and and that's what you get uh, you know when you get those two quality starts out of out of Brody and Cade it looks like a brand new team out there with the confidence and the swagger uh, do you feel the same coach yeah I, you know and I 
listen, getting Andy back healthy, Petey back, and Petey's still fighting it a little bit as far as just playing through some stuff, but but he had a pretty good weekend, and, and Andy's starting to just kind of look like the guy that, that, you know, he was there earlier specifically with being able to run and do and play that part of the game. Um, Michael had a great weekend. You know, Michael was on base all day, all weekend long. Him and Kate actually, you know, got us going a bunch, a bunch of times yesterday, got us going again here today. If you think about Capola is, is rolling, um, frustratingly so rolling, um, you know, but hits Michael, get him in the stretch. Cade, Cade walks, and then all of a sudden we get it going. So I uh, thought those two were outstanding. And then we just got a ton of production from everybody. Everybody did something. Raider ha- had a great weekend, had a bunch of RBIs. Um, and, again, those were the really the only chances we had all day. Um, and he came through in those spots. So it wasn't a great day offensively. Like I said, 16 punch outs, that's not who we are. That's a little confusing. Um, for whatever reason, it was one of those days, and you got to figure out a way to win those yeah. days. And out of out of fifty, sixty games, you're going to have a day or two like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't make it less frustrating when you're in it, but you got to figure out a way to win, and and you do because of that guy on the mound. You know, that guy on the mound just says, "All right, you guys, I got you," and and you, I don't need much today. And that's who Brody was, and um, just really happy for him. And and you know, he's been frustrated. You know, probably not probably more than everybody. You know, because he he has high expectations expectations for himself so he's just kept working man and and then you get get something like that today it's kind of funny I was sitting in there early and Coppola was a freshman All-American last year you know expected to be their Friday guy Team USA guy you know in the summer um and those two guys were starting against each other on Sundays. It's just kind of weird how the world works sometimes. And um, you know, we finally got to him and, and did a did an okay job. Got to Zach and and uh, just did enough. You know, we didn't do need to do a lot because of what Brody was yeah. doing. Just really happy for him. Coach, what can this team accomplish the rest of the way? Well, I mean, we all we can do is accomplish good practice and and a game against UW Milwaukee on Tuesday. I mean, to think of it any more than that is is just getting the cart cart in front of the horse. So um, we know what we're capable of. Certainly we feel like this is closer to the product who we think we are. You know, pretty clean defense, a really good um, balanced offense, and then really good starting pitching. And, um, you know, that's that's what has to happen. You know, we have to get the length out of those guys. And um, if we do that, we're going to have a chance to win series and, and and really win anything and that's that's kind of what the vision was you know starting out January February it hasn't materialized that way but you got plenty of season left to kind of put them together here and get on a roll so hopefully this week you know you get out of the week four now that it's it's kind of a, a sign of, of things to come here in the last latter part of the season keep stacking them coach we'll yeah, see you on Tuesday night thanks Sean associate head coach Marty Sutherland on our post game show from Banks Iowa sweeps Rutgers with a five to one winner today we're back with highlights right after this this. this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy. It's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. If you guessed that was the sound of a bag of Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans, you guessed right. Well, kinda. It was really the sound of an innovative team that spent decades perfecting a seed with exclusive genetics and the ultimate agronomic advantage. The sort of breeders who don't rest until they've achieved outstanding performance. Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans. Number one for a reason. Visit pioneer.com slash genetics. Three runs in the third for Iowa, two runs in the fifth. The Hawkeyes surrender to run in the eighth. Iowa beats Rutgers this afternoon 5-1 to one to sweep the Scarlet Knights. Let's relive some of the highlights. Cohen with some speed at first base, has a good lead, reads a downward angle. Moss picks it, throws to second, got him! What a recovery from Cade Moss! Big time play there by Cade Moss, able to pick that ball off the dirt. Scampers away from him a little bit, but he's able to get up on his feet, barehand that ball and throw him out. 1-0 1-0 to Tello. Hit well to right. Carrying well. Back towards the wall, towards the track. It's off the wall. Right fielder kick. Come up with it. Here comes Nelson. He scores. Petey scores. Tello digging for third. He's safe with a two RBI. Triple to right. 
<laughs> Ground ball right side. Cop cuts Good it boy. off on the backhand. Pitches to Brecht, who's covering. And it's another one, two, three inning for Brecht and the Hawkeyes. This time in the fourth. See if Brody can even things up. The 2 1. Grounded to Tello at third. He slides to knock really it down. Play. He'll step. He'll throw. He'll get him at first. Heck of a play by Raider Tello at third. One ball and two strikes on Tello now. Here's the pitch. Hit down the line in left. Get and out. it is fair. Inside the line. Seeger scores. Here comes Andy. Tello Salsa's in the second with a two RBI double. Yes. Hunting for his 10th strike out of the game. Brody out of the windup. Here comes the 0-2. Swing him. and a miss. Got him again. Have to throw it down to first That's base to complete the transaction. Two down. Lefty on lefty matchup. Ground ball to third. Tello picks it up, throws the second for one. On to first. Double play. How about that? Five, four, three, twin killing. The Hawkeye fans on their feet supporting Ben Dete as he comes set with the 0 2. Swing and a miss. Get out the brooms. How sweep it is. Iowa wins all three against Rutgers and knocks off the Scarlet Knights. Five to one from Banks today. Iowa certainly has a ton of momentum now heading into the final game of the homestand, which will be Tuesday at 6.05 with UW-Milwaukee coming to town. Iowa now 22 and 15, 9 and 6 in the Big 10. Rutgers 23 and 16. They are 3 and 9 in league play. It was a great weekend at Banks. Thanks for tuning in to Iowa Hawkeye Baseball all weekend. Really appreciate Gary Dolphin stepping in, the voice of the Hawkeyes filling in yesterday. He did a nice job as always in the 15 to 5 winner over the Scarlet Knights on Saturday. Iowa won the opener 8 to 1 and then completed the sweep with a pitcher's duel 5 to 1 victory over Rutgers today. It's been a joy to bring you Iowa Hawkeye baseball this weekend. We'll talk to you on Tuesday night at 6:05. How about Brennan Derigi by the way filling in for the great John Evans. We'll have John back this week. Brennan was stellar in his role as the color analyst with us for the weekend really wishing the best of luck for brennan moving forward as he be begins his pro ball season uh coming up in in just a week or two all the best to brennan really appreciate him taking his time to help us out on the hawkeye radio network that'll do it for our coverage of iowa hawkeye baseball today for my great board op down the line you're as much a part of the team as anybody michael thank you great job as always for brennan to i'm john leo saying so long from banks where iowa sweeps rutgers with a five to one winner on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye, but some are just a little bit better than others. Take care, everybody. Hawkeye baseball has been brought to you by High V. Score big savings with a new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.